small secret that nobody wants to talk about. Men or women, not everybody should be alone when they're going through a breakup. Not everybody should be alone when someone in their family dies or they go through a traumatic, tragic situation. It's not in everybody's cards to be alone when you're going through some rough shit. The devil, the devil's playground is in the mind. Sometimes love will beat the shit out of the devil. <laughs> I don't want you guys to tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing with the timing of who I decide to date and who I decide to be with. That woman left me and refused to come back. Zelly, beautiful, sweet, kind. She was out living her best life. Zelly never asked to be here. Truth be told, I never wanted to be with anybody but the woman I was married to. Never cheated, never did anything. Sometimes things crash and burn. And I was hoping that she would at least love me enough to explain in great detail what I actually said or did or when she decided the relationship would be over. She didn't love me enough to do that. She just packed up all her shit and she left. So in the midst of all of the confusion, in the midst of me looking to the left and the right, calling everybody unimaginable that knew me, knew us, every couple, every relationship, our pastors, everybody, I'm looking around and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Can somebody explain anything about anything? And nobody could. So the Lord Jesus Christ that I serve took all of those broken pieces of my heart everywhere, all over the floor. And he says, call on me. <laughs> I'm Jesus. You're my son. <laughs> and I hey, guys, and welcome to black button 91 we are giving you guys a live show um i uh, will be joined by jay anderson king in a few minutes as well but wanted to have a discussion with you guys today you know we said ask a man session we wanted you to ask us anything as well and obviously i wanted to add the topic as well you know what do men fear um and it was interesting because i came across a tyree's video and we we're just talking behind the scenes myself and jay anderson and uh, <laughs> man, it was funny because uh, what Tyree said there, I think is such an important topic to talk about. The question of being, you know, um, not everyone's meant to be alone when, you know, a breakup happens. You know, everyone's ever, you know, you know, not everyone, no one, not everyone wants to, um, you know, uh, not everyone wants to be able to be single for a while after a breakup or even after a divorce. Um, you know, so I, I think it's quite interesting um, that you see that people can come ac across and say these things and say about how they want to be uh, in a place where they are, um, you know, where they are single, where, they, where they're single, when, when they take time from a divorce and then they don't want to give themselves a healing process, but want to jump into the next pool of things. And that's what Tyrese is basically saying. He's saying basically... The girl left me. I jumped into another relationship. Don't shoot me. I just, you know, that's just me. I just did what I did. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't, don't put what you have onto me. And I think that's quite interesting because I think as men, we got to be real honest with ourselves and really, really truthful. Look, jumping from one pool to another pool, it sound good. Okay, it does. It sound good, but let me be real honest with you, it, it, it can be a lot. You know. Um, you know, so we got we got a few things going on today as well. So we we're gonna uh we're gonna we're gonna talk this up, okay? Elsa said after the divorce, I was mingling. I think mingling is cool, but I think when you end up in a full on relationship, whilst you haven't whilst you haven't healed from your own toxicity, which was existing, I think before the marriage in the first place, yeah, he might want to take some time out. Just just a little just a little sit down thing, but. I may be having my own uh, thoughts on that. But anyway, listen, if you're new to the channel, do me a massive favor, like it, share, subscribe, and click on the bell button for notifications of the uploads. You already know what it is, baby, as well. Listen, we're going to get into this. 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 Okay. All right. So uh, much love and appreciation. All right. Let me get my panelists on today. Jay, what are you telling me, bro? I'm all right, man. A little bit tired, but I'm ready for today. Another good topic. 
you know, ready to engage with all of you wonderful people in the chat. I mean, you've been amazing over the past couple of weeks, so I'm looking forward to it. Done no, done no. Um, just really quickly, I know we'll get into our main topic in a few minutes, but you know, just just hearing what Tyrese was kind of saying as well. You know, he he obviously divorced from his wife. Wife didn't give him a reason as to why he divorced. Ended up in another relationship with another young lady, young lady uh, compared to him, um, and not like in a bad way in terms of like it's illegal, but in terms of that she is young. Um, you know, what what was your kind of thoughts to uh, to to Tyrese and what he was saying? I mean, this could allude to something that we will tackle um, later when it comes to, you know, fears and how human beings operate. But to me, it just seems like a man who doesn't know how to be alone, a man who is scared of being alone, a man who has convinced himself that he needs to be around, not just being around, but be engaged in a committed situation with a woman in order to deal with his heartbreak, in order to deal with his demons. You know, if if you've been following him over the past couple of years you will see that he's a truly broken man you know a broken man who who's who's on whatever manner of pills medicines that the doctors are willing to give him a broken man who or another man who is i'm going to say oversharing across social media you know uh, another man who is just making contradictive movements you know even down to the relationship you know they're broken up all over social media then one or two weeks later, you see a picture of them together. It's just a messy situation. And to me, this is a person who doesn't know how to get out of mess. I can't really speak for the marriage. As you know, he says, he said a few times, he still doesn't know what went wrong. You know, I, I can understand that to a certain degree if she didn't communicate or refuses to. However, his actions afterwards just showed, showed to me that if he was like someone that I knew personally, I would have to have a conversation with him because it hasn't like he's come from the situation a better man. He's continued to be a broken man. And that's the issue that I think a lot of us have. Yeah. And I think if we're talking about, you know, our, you know, our own weaknesses and everything as well, um, you know, and uh, I, I think, I think the reality is, you know, for each individual person, Someone's put a question, so let me just highlight that. I think again, this goes back to the whole. Um, I was watching Love It, Love is Blind, actually. So it's funny that it was we're talking about this. I was watching Love is Blind, mm. and I'm on episode three. So later on, guys, I'll put my live up for Love is Blind because I know you guys, I said I would do a live every day. Um, but and I just watched them and I was like, I saw how two of the characters, three of the characters, right? Two, well, let me say two of the characters, one of them being a guy called Zach and a girl called Bliss. Now, on the outside, you might look at it and be like, you know what, Zach seems to be, uh, he's got a little bit of a problem, but nothing too crazy. And then Bliss is like, oh, she ain't much of a problem. Like, she seems like a sweet little girl. But actually, when you listen to the rhetoric of what they speak about, you start to realize there's a lot of brokenness there. Like, for instance, one the girl that Bliss was saying, she was like, oh, um, he was, she she said, um, the girl that you're talking to, talk, the other girl you're talking to is like, no, she said uh, all her ex-boyfriends have been assholes. Uh, he said none of her dad, her dad has never liked any of her exes, but she's like, I don't think you know, I, I, I would love, I would love to introduce you to my dad. I don't think you're an asshole, right? So he was like, You don't know that. <laughs> I said, Sis, get your bag and get the running. No, she didn't do that. Her next response was, Oh, I think you're a better person than you realize. And you don't realize when people start saying, I think you're a better person, you realize in romantic sense, this often means that there is some toxicity left in your system. This is not about you thinking that someone's a good person and being their friend. This is you now in romantic relationships. So in this instance, what you got is people trying to be save, 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 a, save a captain, save a person. Mm. Right. So she had that in her spirit. And in him, he too did. He, he was speaking to one of the guys saying, I know this other girl, Irina is, you know, I know she's. I know that she is a, a player. She likes to play the game around. She likes to use people, da 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 da. But she's the one I trust the most. Huh? Gotta make sense. Bro, it, bro, let me tell you something. That's when you start to realize people are literally fighting themselves with, within themselves. So, what Tyrese is saying here about how he wants to, um, 
you know, he wants to be in a, you know, he's in a situation where, you know, it's not good for him to be alone. I'm like, you don't realize how much toxicity you're carrying in your system. Just because you don't come out and you uh, necessarily abuse somebody or do those kind of things, there's toxicity still in how you handle situations and relationships. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, one of the fears that men fear is, as we were saying yesterday, which is facing yourself, yeah. you know, facing yourself and asking yourself some real questions, you know? So, yeah, I thought I'd leave that little part there as well. Well, let's even add to that. He even said it, to be honest with you. He talked about the dark place, the demons. So I would yes. say he fears going into that place. Mm. In his mind, he needs that love, right? That love mm -hmm. in order to stop him from going to that place. And that's all good and well. I mean, as the word says, love conquers all. But if we bring it down to ourselves as human, like human beings, you're not actually solving anything. You're just running away from the truth. And it starts to seep into the things that you do. And like I mm. said, he's a broken man who continues to be broken because he's not working on his healing. He's just trying to mask it. And I guess we can say a lot of men's fears are they don't want to be broke. If they give their heart to someone, yeah, you know, we've all been through things. We've all, you know, things have happened, right? But if we give mm. our heart to someone, one of the things that men do fear, although a lot of men do not really come out and say it, is to have their heart broken, is to end up being a broken man, whether that be through the things that happen in the relationship or even through divorce. Now, I can see in the comments people mentioning about him not knowing. Look, I know from experience, someone can break up with you, have many reasons, I say many reasons, but the actual reasoning they might not give you. And that's if there is one. Sometimes they haven't even come to an understanding themselves. And they need time to do that. Sometimes they can break up with you. And when they do really think about it, they realize, you know what? I didn't have a good enough reason. You know, the wife, ex-wife hasn't come out and said much, but he even said, I know I showed you the other day, she's even came back after a year and said, you know what? I actually made a mistake. I shouldn't have done ABC and I'm willing to try again. And his response was, I'm with Zelly. I can't just break up with her and come back to you. You know, but... Anyway, but that's what's happened. So it is possible depending on the dynamic. But to me, I'm and like you, bro, I'm big on communication. So to me, it doesn't make sense to end something so drastic without communicating. And as as it comes to Tyrese, whether he was someone who listened or not, we don't know. We don't know the marriage, right? We don't know exactly when it went on. But my concern for him is not even what happened in the marriage. My concern for him is what he's doing now. And it was a concern. It's been a concern for years. You all remember the video, right? What do you want from me? We all remember that video. <laughs> that he came out and mm -hmm. did, thinking, is this Tyrese? Like, what, what's going on here? Like, it was a surprise to everyone. He put it down to he was on, I think, antidepressants or something at the time. And the court case he was going through got to him. Cool, whatever. But to me, as a brother, like, that's a concern. Because mm -hmm. in no, do you know what? I, I would say when it comes to men, when we lose control of our emotions, we can be all over the place. And we can see in this situation what he's doing to himself. He may not realize it, but he can, we can all see what he's doing to himself. And it's a very scary place because I don't know where the limit is. I don't know when he's going to say I've had enough and do something stupid. To me, I don't know. I think family, well, he's kind of sure he's only going to listen to himself, but family and friends need, really need to that. Uh, sit him down and say like, Tyrese, just speak to us. Just share, like, tell us what's going on because we are concerned for you. Yeah, and I think, again, going back to that, facing yourselves, um, you know, uh, you know, this is facing, this is about facing yourself and facing those truths about yourself. Um, and this goes deeper, you know, Tyrese is a prototype to every else, every other man to think about what fears they may have. But, you know, Tyrese, I think the real issue that he's seeing, and I think this again goes to a lot of men, is that if he does actually sit down with himself, he really going to have to ask himself questions. Number two, he cannot gloss over the pain that he maybe he actually deep down is feeling, and he cannot ignore the fact that he sees the world in a particular way. Um, and I think a lot of times when it comes to us as guys, we ignore that because we wanna we wanna be strong. We wanna show up strong, right? So see all that crying that he did on my screen. He could have done that in his room. He could have yeah. done that in his room. You know what I mean? He could have done that in his room. Now I I, I see Tyrese is a very strong and passionate person. 
Um, maybe like he called himself an empath as well. Okay, cool. Um, you know, but you weren't sensing anybody else's feelings when you were crying the way you're crying. You were sensing your own. And that is a key aspect. You need to deal with you first and foremost. And the reason being, for any man out there, especially as well, is it's it, it, it really does affect your choice in women. It really does. Mm -hmm. It really does affect your choice in women. You know, if you don't sit down with self and look at oneself and say, actually, there's things I need to fix, there's things I need to change, the things I need to go about differently within myself, and I, I need to start opening certain doors. And, and, and one of the things that happens, especially in relationships for, for a lot of men is, you know, they go through relationships and sometimes those relationships are actually therapists. Mm -hmm. So like they go through two, three year therapist therapy with a girl. So they're, they're literally sharing, bearing their heart, saying things, learning things, trying out things, practicing things that are actually really more about uh, exercising the demons within themselves. And sometimes when, when you don't want to face yourself, you use other people as a crux, yeah. you know, as, a, as an incubator for some of the pain that you have. So, you know, I think with uh, Tyrese, as he said, look, not everyone's meant to be alone. The reason why he says that is because he himself does not want to face the reality and the darkness that he's going to face. But in order to, to, to get to the place of the light, you need to conquer ignorance and the ignorance here is actually killing you because it's putting you in situations and relationships that are political. Like that video I just showed, you know, um, that one there before it got to that point, we see how she buoyed him up. I think it was at 24. I think I can get a clip where she makes that joke about, uh, uh, the Paul Walker thing. Right. And I'll, I'll play so, it real quick just so um... we can. That's basically look at how it went down. And finally, I gave in, but he said I was mean. The last message I remember him sending to me was, listen, I really like you, um, but you're mean. And I don't understand why I'm getting this energy. And I won't talk to you anymore. <laughs> and then I said, okay. <laughs> because there was, an, you know, it's like, okay. But then he posted a video um, and it said something about mom at the time. Um, who was going through something, and I sent him my first voice note. And was the voice note in the DM? You didn't have my number at the time. I think you left me a voice note in the DM because we didn't exchange numbers. I think. Yeah, I think you left so. me a voice note because my mom was in a coma at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you and sent I me. Love. Sent you something about your mom. That was my first time talk talking to you like okay forget i said that <laughs> what's your name is and then what's your name? <laughs> we started going from there but i was mean you not mean. mean but i was just no, like you straight to the point like what it like what's going on you were mean. and huh. yeah all right so that's the most commonly asked question how do we meet mm -hmm. So as you hear what she says, and I think it's so important. I didn't, even, I didn't play the part where he says about Paul Walker, but you know, she lets us know quite clearly. Well, he lets us know quite clearly. She was mean, and my thing is, if she is mean, why do you want her? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want a partner that's mean. Like, if you like somebody that's a little bit mean, you really need to ask yourself the key question: Why you like that? And that's what we're talking about: facing yourself. You know, so so what is it? What is that? Why are you not facing yourself? Because you're going to look at her and say she's mean. But the reality is that's what she is. But why do you want her then? You know, what's driving you towards there? That's the question each individual person has to ask themselves. Women have to ask themselves that question when you choose a certain type of guy. Men have to ask themselves that question when they choose that certain type of woman. Why is it you are drawn to that? Why are you not? Why are you not thinking mm, this might be a little bit mad? You know? This goes back to that point. And you know, that, that reminds me of um like in America, you won't know this lady, but you probably will coach um a woman called Jasmine Pink, right? <clears throat> she did a mm -hmm. she did an interview the other day and she said many things, right? But to this topic, she said she's 31 years old, she's she's been through a lot, let's just say that, right? And she's currently seeking God more closely, she's going back to church because now she just wants healing, she wants to change her life, change the people she has around her. She just wants to go on a new journey. And one of the things that she said, even now, a good guy will come along. Two, three months is good. And she will just ghost him. But let the guy that got what he wanted and then ghosted her for eight months come back. And she's ready to drop everything for that guy. 
So this is the same sort, ladies. A, a lot of people, a lot of you have been through the same situation where you know this man or this situation or this relationship is not good for you. But you too easily go back into it, convincing yourself of all other things. So then the question would be, why? Why? You know, we can have have different um, viewpoints when it comes to why. Because there's many things that we can say. You know, and one of the things I would say, especially when it comes to men, <clears throat> it's, it's almost like some men fear the type of men that they need to be if they don't have a woman who's acting like a mum towards them. Because it almost feels a void. And what I said is quite complicated, so I'm going to try and simplify it. Because what it, it almost feels a void. So he does, he himself as a man, doesn't know how to be anything else because it seems like this is what he's always been doing he doesn't know how to be anything else and it seems like the stronger party is the women that he's with that they they almost have to be the one to you know okay yes yeah, all right mm, and, see you, you know etc and for a man to step out of that he has to become something different no matter what he looks like what he does how many ladies like him for a man to be something different he has to step out of that a lot of men from human nature are scared to change and be the types of men that they need to be. Because right now, it, we don't know what happens privately, but it seems like she is his crutch. Because whenever, let's say, she decides to walk away, he's all over the place. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's all over social media. He's doing crazy things. He fears being alone. He fears, let's say, that abandonment. He fears not, he fears being in a place where he's forced to deal with himself and grow up. Let's call the spade a spade. Ladies, a lot of men, unfortunately, have this experience. A lot of men that you would have dealt with have this experience. And it would have frustrated you, made you angry. You know, you, you would have thought, what's going on? I'm pouring so much into this guy, but it really feels like there is something missing. There is something that he can't give me. And it's because he can never give you more of him because he doesn't have it, which is why it's so imbalanced, which is why you need to pour into him as if you're the mother, as if you're the doctor, as if you're the therapist. You, <laughs> it's not your job to fix a man, all right? Now, if your husband <laughs> goes through something where, you know, he, he, he needs that mental and emotional and spiritual help from you, that's a different aspect. That's your husband, for richer or for poorer. But when you're in a relationship and you're meeting someone, too many people are, you know, as you said, bro, they, they want to be a knight in shining armor. You, you don't need to. You really don't need to because it takes so much from you. And in a lot of those situations, they end up toxic. I'm not saying it's a, it's a it, toxicity is to the level of where you're violent, abusive towards each other. But as you mentioned in the beginning, how problems are dealt with, how you deal with yourself, what your reasoning is. You know, in a lot of these situations, that person comes out of it and just blames the other person, their A, their B, their C, their D, their E, without realizing that they are toxic within themselves. And if that person really told them the truth, they wouldn't know how to operate. And to me, this is what Tyrese is running from. He's running away from truth. So though he's asking, like, oh, I want to know ABC, but he's really running away from the truth. That's why he wants to mask it with this relationship. Like that. Anyway, I've spoken too much, bro. Go ahead. Um, bro, uh, absolutely, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, I think uh, with these things, you know, the, the greatest fear for any man is, you know, that he gets played by a woman, you know, so sometimes, and this, I'm sure the same for women as well, when it comes to relationships, you're gonna, you, you feel like you're going to get played or you're going to get hurt. So sometimes we do things that actually are counterproductive to being in a place where we won't get hurt, you know what I mean? You know, getting healing actually is one of the things that actually helps in a better prevention way of, you know, not getting hurt, right? Sometimes taking your yourself out of the game, you know, you know healing yourself, and um you know taking that time to to just come back to full fitness so is what oftentimes is the preventional piece from actually being hurt you know what i mean 
Um, and sometimes us as guys, we don't want to do that, bro. Like, if we stop, we're dead. It's almost like if we stop, we're dead. It's like, nah, but you're not, man. You know, if you stop, you're going to have to feel. And if you stop, you're going to have to deal. You know what I mean? And, and that's okay because what you really want is that you, you want the real. Okay? All right? So it, it, for, for a lot of guys, uh, you know, uh, they will – and someone, I think someone put a comment in the chat as well, which was like, guy, men love – like typically this is what men typically enjoy mean girls and i would say you're not talking about men you're talking about boys and mm -hmm. the men you know that are sensible that want a peaceful life that want a marriage to be successful and for it to reign they don't on purposely choose mean girls you know what i mean we don't on purposely choose mean girls um we we can do that because like i said most a lot of us too are carrying a lot of toxicity within our system but we don't look we're not trying to be with these type of women it's not what men really enjoy now do we want someone that's a bit maybe someone a little bit more spicy some guys do like that you know some yeah. guys like to go a little bit spicy but let's not confuse spicy with toxicity you know what i mean like you know let's not conf confuse spicy with combative either you know a little bit of spice is a little bit just a little bit of you know a little bit of uh you know a little bit of kickback but nothing like that's combative and that's something that's heavy something that is weighty something that is toxic we're not looking for that per se um but the guys who are going for that let me just say that straight like you know the same way that women think that we're going for that it's the same way that guys are also saying well girls only go for bad boys mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's not the truth that's not the truth it's not even close to the truth you know so um you know i i think uh for for men they just need to like i said sit on the bench and and heal going forward as well so um yeah but uh, any other thoughts on what men fear in general? Maybe it can be away from even entire reason. Is there anything else in your mind for the, what men fear? That's where I was going as well, because someone mentioned Will Smith in the chat, right? And I was thinking, that's another situation where, as a man, <clears throat> like Will Smith is a nice guy, right? He's a nice guy. He is the type of man that he needs a woman who appreciates that part of him. That's not Jada, but he needs a woman who appreciates that part of him, right? And I'm not saying Jada's bad or she's ABC. I'm just understanding what type of upbringing that she's had and what type of man that she needs. They've made it, well, I'm not going to say they made it work, but they've been trying for 20-something years in a very toxic way, right? That's them. Mm -hmm. But what they need is not who each other are, if that makes sense. Now, if I go to Will, because we're speaking about men, in the beginning... Because of what he went through, he feared, in my opinion, the type of guy that he needed to become in order to deal with a woman like Jada. Which is why he spent so much effort trying to run away from that until the issues and the problems got so much where he now started overreacting as if this is the guy I need to be. But it came out consistently in the worst way. That's another aspect. A lot of guys fear if I choose this woman, can I be myself or do I need to be something else in order to deal with her, so to speak, in order to be what she needs? And that's conversations that, I mean, as men, we have really, like maybe not so directly, but we have these conversations in some sort of way because we see what we see. We see, okay, this woman might be a bit difficult to deal with. This woman might be a bit easier to deal with. Same for you ladies, you be like, okay, I'm looking at this man in this situation. He's like this. What am I to expect if I get with this guy? If I get over a hood guy, what am I to expect? He's a bit <clears throat> of an alpha, of a dominant persona. What am I to expect if I'm with him? This guy's a bit soft. You know, hmm, am I going to be able to walk all over him? Like We have these same conversations. Not so much as ladies. You have, you know, you, ladies, you do a wonderful job of actually speaking about these things because they do matter. But as men, we also have these thought processes, right? And I feel like as men, we need to do a much better job at choosing our spouses with that in mind and not overlooking the things that we know is going to be a problem. So you mentioned um, leadership and respect yesterday, didn't we? You know, so to speak, leadership and respect. There are men who fear that they're not going to be able to lead the woman that they've chosen. There are men who fear that that woman that they've chosen is not going to respect them. Yes, ladies, it, that, that is, that is, that's one of the things that men do think about. 
whether they talk about it, whether they tell you, it's a different thing, like I keep saying. But this is just, the, these are the answers to these questions, which is why some of you ladies would have experienced men who encountered you. They would have said, I liked you. They said, I would have, I would have loved you, but they never put a ring on it. Maybe not even put in the effort. Maybe they became toxic. Maybe they became something that you was looking at them and thinking, wow, what's going on? What's, what's, what's happening here? Why have you become like this? And then he's moved on. He would have learned from this situation, yes, but he's moved on and has been something completely different to another woman. As men, we are telling you that in a lot of those situations, the reason why he's able to be different is simply because that woman is different. She is the type of woman that's going to allow him to be what he needs to be. Yes, he's a bit soft, so what? That woman that he's gone to doesn't just, doesn't just isn't quick to disrespect him, isn't quick to get angry, isn't quick to be frustrated. She still lifts him up as is. And the same thing for, I'm, I'm hoping the ladies in this chat have experienced this, where another man would have made you feel like you're not good enough. You're A, you're B. You know, he's put you down, he's he's insulted you, he's made you feel useless, like you're not valuable. But another man has come along and the way he is towards you has made you feel special. Has made you feel in some sort of way a, a feeling that some of you have never felt before. And I'm talking about from childhood up to now. Like the way he loves you is just different. This is what I'm talking about. For ladies in this situation, they fear if I marry this man, am I going to be loved correctly? And if you have to ask that question, most of the time the answer is no anyway, if you have to really answer that question. Because when it comes to a man loving a woman, it's automatic. You you won't even question whether he loves you, let's be honest with you. That's a different conversation. But when it comes to men fears, these are some of the things like that we really do go through as men and we experience. And when we experience these things, it really does show us, do you know what, we was right. We was right in the first place. And it can change us, but hopefully it changes us for the better because we become more of who we truly need to be. And as Christians, right, we need, we need to remember in our brain, because I know Tyrese mentioned Jesus, but, okay, it's understanding who are we meant to be in Christ. That, to me, is really how we're walking. Because if you look at who Christ was as a man, he was the perfect image of that. He encapsulated all aspects that we can think about. He, the way he led, the way he talked to his people, the way he dealt with himself, the way he used to go to the cave when things would, you know, get a bit problematic. You know, he, the way he dealt with sin, the way he dealt with things that were wrong, it was it's wonderful to read. You know, and this is the model that we need to really follow. But in this day and age, it's hard. It's hard for everybody, it's difficult because of the things that we've been through, because of society. So it's so much easier for people to run away from these things instead of actually deal with themselves. How you doing? What's that? Go go off. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, don't worry, go off. Next week we'll bring the panel back on Tuesday. So I missed Tuesday. I was out, out and about. So I think it's due on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, bro, listen, you know, um, <sighs> Yeah, you know, I I think in in this um, instance, you know, I was even just trying to find a clip on um, love love is blind actually about it, um, but you know, I think importantly for for men when we're coming to their fears, of course, you kind of mentioned it, both men and women also feeling that same type of fear. Um, but you said something which is interesting, right? You said about um, someone trusting leadership or trusting your 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 lead. And um, when I was watching Love Is Blind, it was so interesting because um, there was something that I said to the audience the night before when I did a live. I was saying about how that Zach will not be able to forgive the character Bliss because basically the girl was saying to him. Um, I'm, you know, this is going to be, the girl was saying, this is going to be my opportunity to see what your judgment is around, about this girl. Mm. Bear in mind, the other girl, Irina, was manipulative and he admitted that the other girl was manipulative, but he trusted the manipulative girl over the girl who said, you know what, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to judge your judgment, uh, if, if you end up choosing her. And I said that, that comment alone will end it for her. End it. 
Because when it comes to what, what she didn't realize is she questioned his whole entire discernment and judgment. And actually, him question, her questioning his judgment and discernment in terms of, let's say he wants to pick that other girl, would also mean he questions your discernment. He questions, he's questioning his own discernment for you. Mm. So meanwhile, while you might have been thinking you got that you were trying to show him uh, that, you know, his judge, judgment will be off following the other girl. The fact that he's talking to you and the other girl, he has to question his judgment on you as well. So you actually cancelled yourself. And a lot of times, the reason why I brought that up is because, again, we've been talking about this for the last few weeks about how, as men, you know, we, we, you know, and again, I'm sure women will um, have to understand we're not trying to take it out of context of the situation. You know, I don't want to be with somebody who can't follow my lead. You know what I'm saying? And my lead does not mean I'm going to just do it, whatever, whatever. But it does mean that, you know, you, you want someone that's able to get on with you, you know, that, that trusts and believes you. And there are people like this, you know. I, I'll be honest with you. There are people like this. There are plenty of women that when you meet them, they're like they're happy for you to take the lead. That doesn't mean they're not gonna they're not gonna you know say what their piece or let you know that they don't agree with something. But there's a way to be agreeable when it's disagreeable. And I think for men, they fear the greatest fear. One of the greatest fears that we fear around this is is also somebody who who doesn't take someone who doesn't respect you. You know what I mean? And usually you end up in that place when you're carrying some low self esteem, poor boundaries, uh, don't know how to express yourself. Uh, don't know how to tell the person how you feel and what you need. Um, and you're operating usually by your senses and your sensuality. You, end up, you normally end up with women like that because you can't ignore the fact this person doesn't respect you in this particular way. The only way you can do that is when you override it with other stronger feelings, which is usually sensuality, sexuality, um, and, uh, you know, let's go with a vibe or, or the energy. And there's, you know, you can get caught up in those things. But, you know, and so I think a lot of men because they don't learn how to heal, one of the greatest fears is a woman that will play me. Let me be honest with you. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily fear a woman that can play me because I'm in a better place. You know, I don't fear that anymore. It's not one of my fears that she's like, oh, she's going to play me. No, like, oh, if I take on a date, she's going to use me for money. It's up to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's up to you. If that's what you want to do, it's going to show me who you are straight away. So it's like, again, those fears come because there's a lack of healing for us in our spaces that allows us to be in a better position to be able to see appropriately and discern. We don't even trust our own judgment. I think that's the biggest thing. We don't we don't trust our own judgment when it comes to uh, dealing with these things. And sometimes when you don't trust your own judgment, that's how your fear doubles. Because people are fearing, I don't know if I can make the right decision. So then they start making up rules to try and make up a decision. And this is where some of these talking points end up going left, where, you know what I mean, that you start labeling people certain things because you have to do it to say, that's the only way I can be able to d discern between the two. Almost like when you go into a science room, my, this will be my last word, when you go into a science room and, you, you know, you have two bottles. Remember back in school, one was water, one was hydrocox uh, hydrocoxide, whatever it is, whatever. You can't really tell the difference between the two, right? They're both clear. So they label the bottle right so that someone doesn't have danger someone doesn't drink the wrong thing or touch it with their hands the wrong thing and oftentimes that's what people do because their discernment's off now of course i'm not asking you to discern between hydrocloxide or whatever it is and and water we don't want that but the reality is if you've dealt enough with water and dealt enough with hydrocloxide or whatever it is you will realize there's a difference you don't you don't have to even touch the bottle you can just look at it and you'll be able to see that oh, there's a difference here and what that means is same thing with relationships you won't have to always put labels on people da, 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 because you're afraid. Um, it doesn't mean that you won't label some things. I'm just saying that you won't have to. Everything has to have a rule. Uh, 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 uh. Nah, you just you you can move and you can flow because you know exactly what you're looking for and how to discern between the fake and the real. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that's sort of quite an important thing. Can you tell the difference between the real and the fake? You know. And and, and this is what we see in the manosphere now, right? Where those men across famous podcasts are basically saying it's either, well, I'm going to say my way or the highway, but it's not done in a, a way that's like, listen, this is where I want us to go as a family. I can't deal with disruption or obstacles. It's not even like we can come to an agreement or compromise. You just don't want to come with me. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about but these men, how they want to operate is to treat women as if they're not valuable, so to speak. And where this place comes from is exactly that. It's that fear of, usually in the past, I've allowed myself to be vulnerable. 
and this woman or several women have basically abused me. So therefore, I'm going to be that type of person now. I'm going to be something that I'm not, and I'm going to be to these women what they were to me. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. And these are the things that needs to change because it's, it's not helping. It's not helping. This is why you have a whole bunch of men trying to convince women it's okay for me to have other women. Deal with mm. them. And, you know, culturally, the, the, you know, because some people use the Bible to justify it. Oh, because it was in the Bible. Listen, that had nothing to do with faith. They had nothing to do with God. This is, these are just the things that these men chose because of culture at the time. When I say these men, these were very rich men. These were kings. You know, these were emperors. These were people of extremely high value where they had concubines. It, the Bible never ever said it was okay. These are just things that they did. But this is why you have men now who, under no circumstances, should be talking at all. <laughs> Trying to convince women that it's okay to have, you know, more than one woman and you have to put up with it if you want to be with me. To me, that's crazy talk, right? But if we move on. And thank you for giving like your, you know, like a self-evaluation because as you were speaking, I was thinking about myself, right? And, you know, coming out of, you know, my previous marriage, one of the things that I already understood was that I, I almost turned my back on my purpose, right? I, I almost turned my back on where I knew God wanted me to be because I was focusing so much on trying to make um, the marriage work. Now, one of the fears that some men have is that, you know, am I going to be able to continue to walk on my purpose? Or is the person in my life going to pull me down from it, take me off it, or is she going to ruin it, right? And so coming out of that situation, that was a fear that I had. I had that fear in terms of, I can't trust anyone. I, 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 I just I don't know if I can do it. I don't want to do it because my purpose, I'm holding it so dear. What I, what I need is a woman who's willing to walk with me, you know? If I need to carry her, I'll carry her. But as I'm carrying her, she's not going to fight me. She's going to be willing to come with me on this journey. But what I had to do, I had to go, and I mentioned it yesterday, I had to go into a self-reflection of me and stop thinking about the other person. I had to stop thinking, you know, this, this person hurt me, this person did it. And I had to say to myself, but Jason, what type of person do you need to be? Because you should have never been in that position in the first place at all that should not even have been a decision so that means jason that there was something that you was not doing so i said to myself do you know what that's correct so who do i need to be moving forward and fast forward to today i mean i'm, I'm you know I, to me i just say god is good god is amazing and it's because i had that changed mindset because i could have easily been like these guys in the manosphere being angry, saying all sorts, because I've been through some things, you know, I've been through some things, but I choose to not let that define me. I just choose to speak about it when it's necessary, but I choose to speak about it. But one of the things that's more important to me is that as a man, who am I and who am I becoming? You know, who, what is behind me? You know, who was I before? Okay, that's cool. And, but the person I am now is something even greater. So these are the things that encourage me. So I don't operate from a place of fear and it's so liberating. I don't have to put restrictions on. It's so liberating. However, all of us can get caught out at times. All of us can get reminders. All of us can, you know, see things and think, hmm, okay, I've seen this before. But at the end of the day, that's cool. That's, that's human nature. You just have to communicate and see how the other person responds. And the same thing for you ladies. Like some of the things that you've been through, there should be nothing wrong with just asking a man about some of the things, some of his habits, some of the things that he does. You know, if you've had a man waste your time, I don't see an issue about speaking about marriage on the first date. I'm not saying you're telling him you want to marry him, you want to get married next week, you want to get married in a month's time. What I'm saying is, you know this is what you want in your life. So ask the man, how do you feel about marriage in general? Is it something that you want to do? Is it something that scares you? Is it something that, that, that you know, that you're running away from? What are your experiences? Was your mom and dad married? Let me understand you. These are that, these are amazing conversations that we all need to have because they help to alleviate fears. And once someone tells you what it is, just believe them. Stop making excuses. Just believe them. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people do lie. I can't, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to pretend about that. But in life, there's a lot of things that we should be doing 
as individuals to make our lives a lot more easier. And one of those things, one of those things is not running away from the things that we fear. We have to face them. I mean, we have Jesus, so we haven't overcome already. So we'll, all we need to do is just draw on his strength. It's difficult going into warfare, going into that battle within. It's difficult. But when you come out on the other side, you realize things are so much better, so much brighter. There's always a way. Yeah, bro, you ain't telling no lies. You ain't telling no lies. Um, I think there's a few questions and uh, that will come up and we can read them and uh, answer them. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. There's a few questions. Okay, there's, one, there's a few questions here. So I'll bring it. I'll bring it all up, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, Everyone ask questions, but we're looking forward to different them, them so. Yeah. Okay. So let's go through a couple of questions. <laughs> I can see asking this asking this question here. This is the very first one I saw. So I said the other day you made a dark arts video about losing weight. Oh my god. Um I have done that before and still managed to attract guys who were even less sincere than the type I was getting before. What's going on? Yo, <laughs> I mean, I definitely know I didn't just say lose weight as as the main reason as to avoid toxic men. Um, no, what I what I was saying was, um, you know, that as you as you lose weight, you tend to have a broader horizon of options. It's just it's just the reality of things, right? Um, you know, and, and again, depending on where we're losing weight from, okay, that's also very important. Shape is also very important. Let me be very thorough with you, okay? All right. So if, if the if the weight is going to your, your niash, no one's complaining. If the weight's going to your chest, no one's complaining. Okay. So if, if we, we keep it real in that particular sense, right? But you know, the the people coming towards you who are going to be insincere and sincere, they're always going to come, right? But they come in more options when you tend to be the fit. Um, and then, but the reality is, if you haven't changed within, it don't matter how much the outside is, mm -hmm. this person will still attract those people that aren't good for you. And in fact, you'll still attract people that aren't good for you in some sense. Even when you change within, you just now can discern it. And as you discern it, you realize that your energy is actually off putting to people like that. Like if you know that if, if I'm a person that is, uh, you know, got a bit of a rude tone to me and I, and I know women like that. The ones that are like, I don't like that. As soon as I try it, they're out. They don't waste time. They're out the door. So this is, it's outer shell coupled with the inner shell, making sure that is, that is uh, uh, appropriately fixed within, you know, you're on your healing journey. Um, that will help you discern and be able to see what you want because you're able to judge that. Because the reason why we like toxicity is because we judge it based upon ourselves. And if we see ourselves as a particular way, we tend to give people grace who we see similar to ourselves. So if you don't see yourself as healed, you don't give grace to people. You give grace to people who also aren't healed. But the reality is it ends up in toxicity because you see yourself as being a little bit toxic. So you give them grace. You know what I mean? So you have to realize that once you change within and you work on you inside, inside as well as the outside, that's what's going to change the kind of people that are approaching you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hope that answers it. Bro, you can go for it if you want to answer it. Yeah, I will, you know. Do you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to say this, right? As men, we don't go gym to look good for other men. We don't go gym That's to, right. you know, say, Kojo, look at my muscles. Yeah. Can you see? We, we, we were willing to admit that's, that's not the case. We're not particularly delusional about that, right? We understand what it means to look good to the opposite sex. And as a human being, what comes with that is, you know, increased confidence increased positivity about yourself you know what you know just just different perspectives that you may gain because of the new decisions that you're now making in your life right and one of the things that i've seen from so many women who embark on this journey of you know whether self-discovery or fitness is that they just say they simply feel better better moods better within themselves they're laughing more positive outlook you know, and, and it's and it's wonderful to see because you can generally see it. And I'm not saying that happens all the time. There's still some people who will look like, you know, a model, but they will still be horrible in their character. That does happen. But once you've got the whole understanding about mindset, about body, about health, it does something to you, right? So when it comes to these types of questions, 
in general, the more better we look, the more the more people are going to stand up and take notice. That that one you can't even run away from. Man or woman, it is the case. It doesn't matter if you used to get attention beforehand. The more better you look, the more attention you're going to get. That one is that that one is a given. But to always but to address these types of questions, I just point it to the type of new person that you become. You know, because you're changing your whole lifestyle. You're changing your mindset. Your friends might be different. Your surroundings might be different. How you speak about yourself might be different. These are the things that matter more. And the reason is because of what Coach said, doing that work on the inside, that's where that's where it really, you know, that's where it counts the most. You know, if you, if you have to do these things to start that journey, no problem. That's cool. As long as you get there. And yeah, that's, that's you know, just seeing it as losing weight to avoid a toxic man, that, that's not the way to see that at all. I don't 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 look at it like that. It's just more about what's happening on the inside and how, and and feeling self. Now, if it's about attracting men and you feel like okay, I can't attract the men that they want because you know I, I'm a certain size and I don't like that, or I can't attract the women that I want because these women don't want a bare belly. That's a different conversation. You know, that's a different conversation. But we can't get away. We can't get away from the fact that the more aesthetically pleasing that we look, the more attractive that we are going to be to the opposite sex. That one. Yeah, we can't get away from that anyway. Mm -hmm. Good one. All right, next question. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't know what this is in relation to, but it asks the question, is that why men are trying to force all women to submit? <laughs> I think it's earlier on, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go or should I go? You can go, bro. There are certain men, I'm gonna agree with you, there are certain men who are f who I'm not even gonna use the word force, I'm gonna say who are ruthless about it. Because that aspect of control, as I mentioned, if they're controlling the narrative, if they're controlling this particular scenario, giving the woman no choice effectively, then it, it that that's their safe place. So there are men who will do that. I'm not saying all men, that's not a you know, one size fits all statement. There are men who are like that, but no, in general, there's a lot more men who, what they're thinking about is, I, you know, as a man, I'm where I am. I don't want my life to be derailed because I have someone who doesn't want to cooperate. Someone who wants me to go their way. Someone who's not willing to compromise. Someone who always wants it about themselves, what they're thinking, what they're feeling like. Someone who also has issues with control. Let's, let's be honest here. You know, and it just comes down to conversation. I feel like sometimes we can be so adversar adversarial that we, that we don't realize it doesn't need to be that way. We just need to have a conversation and sit down and understand what does, you know, what does leadership look like for you? What does submission look like for you? And, and that's it. And then if you're willing, I saw something today that said, I don't need to tell someone how to love me. I just watch how they love me and see if I want to participate. I mean, that's a great saying, by the way, wonderful saying, but the truth is you're going to have to tell people. You're going to have to communicate because no one is perfect. No one does anything in a perfect way. So we have to be able to have those conversations and then decide, okay, with what this person is saying, if they stay this way for the rest of our lives, would I be happy with that? Yes or no? Then you can make your decision. But that's me, bro. <sighs> Hmm. I'll leave that as it is. <laughs> I'll leave that as it is. <laughs> I think you didn't answer the question. Um, and there's the next one. Oh my gosh, my throat. Can I say this as well before you carry on? It is very dangerous yeah. to always think worst case scenario. Very dangerous. <clears throat> we men and women need to get out of the habit. Remember. Now, so next question. <clears throat> Do do men fear the expectations of patriarchy? Mm. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, cool. Do men fear the expectations of patriarchy? Um, I think you 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 only fear it if you feel you're already inadequate in terms of the expectations of the role. Do you know what I mean? Um and if the expectations are far beyond your capabilities, 
you know for instance right now we talk about obviously financial financial is one of those expectations of patriarchy that is birthed i believe in in rooted in biblically anyway part of it in terms of man providing for his home but how that looks especially in this modern day and age you know we talk about um having conversations and sometimes there being the minority making the majority in terms of what is expected can cause men to to fear that role for instance let's say for instance we we all know that women want providers mm. we all know that you know um and any woman who doesn't want that yeah you're part i believe you're part of the minority i think all women want most women want a provider a providing man a man that can pay um and you know financially take care of her right but we are in the modern era of the world um inflation's a real thing um uh food index is a real thing um you know sugar tax is a real thing um you know and uh bills and taxes are a real thing um and so you realize that in some places being a sole provider can be very difficult that can become part of the expectation that can be very heavy um but that can also be coupled with the fact that again just like when women, women hear the minority speaking the majority of what men actually want the same thing for men men can hear in the corridors of minority asking for the majority for instance someone might say that you know i expect the man to pay all the mortgage and pay all the big bills someone might say well if they keep hearing that that's what women want but that's not the majority that might not be the majority of women what they want you know what i mean in terms of actually paying all the bills would they like that the ideal versus the reality is two different things too so sometimes the expectation of patriarchy the problem arises through the ideals that come with it um and i'm just giving one aspect of it again um you know i think that sometimes that can be very difficult for men they can fear the aspects of patriarchy that the output that's required and needed um to be respected in the community that they're in requires things that may, they may not necessarily have you know what i mean are they a great leader okay but uh, do they have the leadership skills um do they have the the leader, leader leadership acumen you know um are they finding people and, and the reality is as well like and i don't i don't <laughs> listen i'm gonna tell you straight i'm gonna tell you all straight you find a woman that beats you in all in all aspects you need to leave her alone <laughs> i'm just gonna say i'm gonna tell you straight that's patriarchy for you let me tell you straight okay because as much as men are affected by patriarchy so are women so as much as i'm indoctrinated from birth so are women so you know if that woman beats you in every quarter financially she beats you spiritually she beats you mentally she beats you emotionally she beats you dog we haven't got anywhere to go you know she beats you in every every ounce of the corners you might be suffering you just might be suffering so again that's even patriarchy again because it's, again it's like when we talk about men and women and what roles we play and who should be the head and who should be the lead and who uh do women want a man that they look up to i mean listen ladies how many of you want a man that you're better than me at everything you're smarter than him you're faster than him you're even stronger than him shoot you know what i mean you're more intelligent than him like yo you make more money than him you know what i'm saying mentally you're stronger than him emotionally you're sharper than him you know what I mean? Spiritually, you're ahead of him. Like, ladies, let's be honest. Do you want a man like that? Just going to be very honest with you right now. Put it in the chat for me and let me know if you want a man like that. That's the expectation of patriarchy in some sense as well that we're facing. Um, and and no, yes. So yes, men do fear that aspect. But uh, I would say cut your cloth according to your coat size. But yeah, go for it, bro. You said it, man. I mean, <clears throat> you said it perfectly when it comes to fear, right? So I... Uh, I won't add to what you're saying. I'll just um, give a different angle. For some men, it's not, they don't fear it. It's, they just can't handle it, right? They can't That's handle it. what comes with it. And sometimes it's not a choice that, or no, let me say that correctly. Sometimes it's not simply as I'm choosing not to be a man that can handle it. Because we're all coming from different backgrounds. There's a lot of men, as opposed to our parents, as opposed to our grandparents or great grandparents, that haven't been taught how to be the types of men that they need to be. Because the word patriarchy has been turned into some evil word, but it's also patriarchy that says women and children first, right? When it comes to being saved. It's also patriarchy that has an expectation of a woman of being attacked, that is naturally the up attacked by a man naturally the other men who are around are going to come to her rescue right it's patriarchy that has caused you know 
these these fairy tales where the knight in shining armor comes to save the damsel in distress, etc. So patriarchy has caused the benefit to women to where they feel protected. Now, do we want to live in a world where women don't feel protected like a lot do now? Absolutely no way. So it's inherent, right? It's given to us by God, the, the placements that we have in each other's lives in order to create that perfect harmony. But there are some men, they can't measure up to that. That's if I'm just being honest. There are some men, they're not where they need to be yet. And unfortunately, we've now come to a time where some men are never even going to get there at all. You know, I, I know guys in their 50s and 60s, when I look at their behavior and what they're doing, they have kids everywhere, but they're not responsible. You know, they, they, they fight with their muscles, but they can't fight with their brain. You know, they're very dangerous people in society. So, you know, yeah, there, there's just simply a lot of men who can't handle, you know, those expectations. Now, to me, you know, one of the things that, that Coach mentioned is as a guy, if you're in a situation where a woman is better in every aspect, the natural ordinance of patriarchy means that she wants the man to be better, right? She wants the man to, to be able to, like we mentioned yesterday, she wants to be able to say, wow, I really learned from my man. Like my man is really a leader, et cetera. So in those scenarios, it's normally a, a trouble. <laughs> that's that's going to come in the relationship. So as a man, you need to be careful. And as a woman, do you know what? I'm not, even saying anything negative against women who start to feel some particular way, because I understand, we understand, like we understand what feels more natural for you, despite what you've had to do in your life. We understand what feels more natural. So you have a right to show I'm frustrated by this, right? I'm not happy by this. Oh, me and Kojo were discussing, <laughs> we'll talk about it probably next week, right? But we'll just highlight it at the moment. Um, I think my miss is the one that told me about, what was that show again uh, by Taraji? Mac uh, Acrimony. Right, right. Now, I haven't seen it, so it was just a guy who was working on his craft for 18 years, right? And then I'm getting divorced in the end. I have a friend who, for over 20 years, he was trying to be a music artist. And he was with his woman at this point in time for like 16 years. He was married before. So now it's they're both in their 40s. She's thinking, we're not married you know, want to get married, want to settle down, have kids. I need to find out what's going on. This guy keeps putting it off because he's not where he feels he needs to be. Now, she, she gave him an ultimatum, right? Music or me. He didn't really give an answer, but he went to Scotland to perform. When he came back, the woman's clothes out the house and the TV that she bought was also gone. He said to me, he just sat down and cried. There was nothing that he could do. He just had to let her go. So we all delve into this conversation like next week properly when it comes to this aspect, because I know a lot of ladies have had to do with guys who are just not living up to their potential at all. But in terms of the patriarchy conversation, there's a lot of men who are not able to be flexible. They're not able to be resourceful. They're not able to meet the needs. I'm not saying they have to be perfect or be at this high level. I'm saying they're just not able to maneuver and be on the way there. And that's because some men are just focused on themselves. Some men are irresponsible. You know, some men are not wise. And that's an aspect that, that men like us need to talk about more because it's not going to get any better unless it gets addressed. Right? It's just not going to get any better unless it gets addressed. And these are things that only men can really teach other men about. Because men will tend to listen to other men. They don't really tend to argue. Like as men, we don't really tend to argue with each other about certain things. We know this is the truth. The question is whether we go and do it or not. That's me, bro. I want to add anything else to that, Cap. I'll leave that there. Oh, I'll leave that there. I think you answered that quite well, bro. Uh, next question. How do you tell a man how do you tell a man that you need him to be a certain way with you without feeling like you're changing him? Mm. Mm. Bro, go for it, bro. They're talking to you. Me? Oh, your hair's <laughs> on, bro. The question I have for anyone asking this question, why do you want to change him? Let's let me just start there. Why do you want to change him? Now, if it was like an account in this session, then we can go into the detail. Okay, what are you trying to change? But if we double back, is why are you trying to change him? Why is he not good enough? Because ultimately, you have to be able to ask the question: If you marry this person as is, would you be happy? 
you know, we all grow, we all evolve, or we all, but I'm assuming no one on this call is 20 years old. I'm assuming everyone's at a mature age where you know what you want, right? I'm not saying you dash someone to the side because there's something that's wrong, but no one should be in a position where your aspect is, I need to change this person. In a relationship, in a marriage, we refine each other. We, you know, we all change in general because not only do we have to grow, but we have to understand each other and be the best that we can be for each other. And that's, that's a standard, right? But to the aspect of how can I change, you know, I need him to be a certain way. No, because it's a, it's a dangerous rhetoric. It's a dangerous aspect. And this is why questions like this, we need a bit more specific detail. Because let's just say if you want a man to be more dominant, but he's more of a softer guy, you shouldn't be with him in the first place. Because for him to be more dominant, the usual case, he's going to have to go through a madness that's going to change his character. That character might not be what's going to serve you in the way that you need. So to me, is accept people for who they are. If there's, some, if there's certain issues, address them, communicate, talk about them. If these things really bother you, and that's the question, if they really bother you, I'm not talking about little small things that realistically are you going to jeopardize the relationship over? I'm not talking about those things. These things shouldn't blow over where you now start questioning everything. I'm talking about specific things like that are that matter. For example, if he is not a go-getter and he is a bit lazy when it comes to being resourceful, when it comes to working, etc., that's something that's major to me. So if you need to speak to him and say, okay, listen, you have potential. You can grow, you just have to put in the effort. If he doesn't want to do it, then the decision is yours. But, you know, the decision is yours. That in itself is you being in the place that you need to be to inspire him to be what he needs to be and vice versa. You know, but if it's something where the way he dresses, right? He feels like he dresses fine, but... You know, <laughs> you want him to dress a certain way. You have to be careful because in a lot of cases, you're trying to turn him into the image of the man that you actually want, which is a very dangerous aspect to actually do. Because he, that man is never going to be enough for you. And you need to be able to admit, but anyway, I can talk for days on this because there's so many different aspects. What do you think, bro? Yeah, I mean, listen. Um, Look, let me be honest with you. Uh, this situation is always tricky uh, because people don't like being uh, controlled. Um, people don't like uh, feeling like, you know, they have to... Um... Okay, let me put this way. So people don't like feeling like they're being controlled. People don't feel like they're not being wanted for who they are. But if we're talking about character aspect let me start from there first character changes right so if you feel like let's say i say things too harshly right um so you, you know you you feel like um i when i say things i remember one of my exes would say to me you say things so black and white and it's like yeah because it's black and white for me right it's black and white okay now if you're if you feel like this is something that you know uh can be can be changed you can only request, you cannot demand. You can demand, but it can end badly. That's what I'm going to say, right? Um, I think someone else said it. You want the person to come to the realization of what that person is doing is not beneficial or could be harmful. So what you what you want, want what you want to be doing is having real conversation with that person. So if it's a character thing that you feel like is detrimental or harm, har, harmful or hurt hurts to, towards you then let's keep it a buck, let's keep it real. You know, have the conversation with him. Explain why this hurts, explain why this is detrimental, explain why this is not beneficial, um, and explain why you feel like, uh, you know, this, this particular behavior doesn't benefit the relationship. You know what I mean? If it's a character issue, I'm talking about character issue now, um, those, those things are important. We all have to have to say those things because, you know, if, if you feel like you, if you feel like there's something that's affecting you and this is, is it, it, it's, it's hurting you, you have to let me know. Cause sometimes our party does not know, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and again, things that are delicate and sensitive, choose your timing and your place correctly. Some of you 
are the worst offenders when it comes to time and season. You say these things in an argument. You say these things when you're pissed off. You say these things in retaliation rather than telling the person in an actual setting where, do you know what? We've taken some time out. Listen, babe, let's talk about this or whatever, wherever. You know, love you and everything, but let's want to bring up this thing to your, to your attention. Sometimes when we're talking, you say X, Y, and Z. Saying it to me in the middle of an argument, yeah, I might not take it in all the way. But you know what I'm saying? But when we're much more calmer, emotions have not uh, arisen. I'm in a much more calmer state. I'm not busy watching the football. I'm not busy uh, trying to clean the garage or whatever. I'm just being silly. But you know what I mean? Like choosing your moments correctly. You know what I mean? And this is where women should be using their feminine charm. You see, this is the thing I have a problem with. You don't know how to use your feminine charm when you want to get the pay, pay for dates. But when it comes to your relationship, you don't want to use a feminine charm. The feminine charm needs to be used. Right when you're in a relationship, this is the time to now be using your body, not sex body, which means using your physical touch. You know what I'm saying? This is the time that you start showing your softness because this is where it gets us to maneuver as well. Because remember, when you're coming to tell us something, the same way you might feel vulnerable, we also feel vulnerable. You know what I mean? And someone might say, This is where you pander to the part you want the woman to pander to men, you want us to coddle your feelings. If your first thought is when you hear me say about use your feminine wiles and use physical touch to you know to get him to come around to your side, that oh, I have to coddle him, you are in the wrong ballpark of conversation, and you already show me where your heart is. And that's what I'm trying to say to you. It's not about that. No one said that by the way, right now, but I'm saying if that's your first thought. Just in case if we get, I know where it's going to, but people get that, you get excited and they go in there. <laughs> the feminine charm, I've spoken on this before. The feminine charm, it's, it, it's, it's seductive, but it's it's smooth, it's 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 soft. So when you're coming to me, I'm not saying put on a baby, va baby voice, no one's saying that, right? But what I'm saying to you is when you are trying to have this conversation in this vulnerable moment that could hurt me also when you're saying what you're saying because you're telling the truth, this is the, t listen, some of our mothers know they will cook a meal. Hmm, that's gonna uh, dissuade me quickly before I realize that I'm in the middle of the meal. She's saying, Babe, there's some things we need to talk about. You're already halfway through the meal. It's like, I'm not saying that's what I have to do. Some of, some, some of them knew how to they touch you in a particular way on your arm or your shoulder, you know, and they say, Babe, listen, there's things that a couple of things I want to talk to you about, you know, just, just you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it softens the approach. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Or you're choosing a time where maybe you're walking with me and we're walking, you're holding my hand and we're talking. And you say, babe, look, there's a couple of things I just want to bring up to your attention, you know? Just like the last few times we've spoken, you've said X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know. And again, if you've got men that are going to now cuss you out after that, you're with the wrong type of men. You don't need to be with these type of men. You know what I'm saying? Like sensible men are not here trying to cuss you out when you try to bring up points to them. I'm not saying that the arguments don't happen, but again, you know, you got to use your best tools. You're feminine. You're beautiful. You're soft. You know what I'm saying? You know, man, you're chocolate, the melanin. You've got to use these tools to your advantage. The, what, the, the problem is that in our society now, women have almost become like men in the way they approach things. Why do I have to do that then? Why can't I just approach you and just talk to you? Because you're not a man. You're a woman. And I'm not approaching you the same way I approach a man because you're a woman. If I approached you the same way I approached a man, we'd have problems in that relationship as well. So you got to use your skills, use your particular assets, use a resource that God has given you. You know, little, little girls understand this with their dads. When they go to their dad, they go, they sit on his knee and then they ask for something from their dad. And the dad is like, oh, I can't even say no. She's cornered me almost in a sense, right? It's the same thing. It's the same kind of thing. It's using your feminine charm. It's using your softness. And that can be very difficult for a lot of women in this modern day and age because they've been hardened by our society and by some of the hurt and the pain they've gone through. You know what I mean? So rather than trying to go back and forth with me or try to approach me like a man because you feel like I'm a man, I shouldn't be cuddled. I'm not asking you to coddle me. What I'm saying to you is approach it in a way that's going to get me to see you differently. You know what I mean? To approach me that way. You, you can draw a lot more out of me. You know what I'm saying? Like you can catch more with the honey than you do with the vinegar. So use the honey. Use the honey. You know what I'm saying? Yes, bro. Cool. You know, uh, what you said is sweet. Yeah. So what I'm going to say, and I'm just a reminder, everyone, to give love or to give respect is not giving it through hardness, right? It's to give it through softness, through humility. Okay? And I've said that to set a foundation. And this is to women. So as women, 
you know when men talk to you harshly you're not really receptive so therefore what you say is talk to me with love talk to me kinder okay we can see what's happening in this world you know that the whole thing about how men say things stops women actually listening to the message it happens right understand that men also operate the same way if you want if you are coming with the harshness if you're coming with the anger with the militancy he is less likely going to be receptive to whatever you're asking him about just because he is a man doesn't mean that you that's how you approach him because other men don't talk to each other that way unless we dislike each other unless we want to disrespect each other on purpose so this is one of the things to take heed in trying to understand the man and to me what you're saying code is wonderful because like i've had to think this week right about this specific thing and i've realized how much more receptive i am when my missus for example is you know when i feel respected when i feel like she's being submissive you know and and i'm not even talking about i've said something or something has happened i'm just saying just the way that she is in that moment from the things she decides to say to me how she operates around me whereas let's just say if she was going to be militant if she was going to be you know the alan sugar or well, you know on the apprentice alan sugar in america was donald trump and just give the fire i've understood how less likely i am going to be responsive and that's a natural thing in me so this is why i set the foundation about love and respect coming from a place of humility because when we and i mentioned this i mention this all the time when as a man when we love right we are able to get the best out of a woman she's able to be more receptive she's able to listen to us um a lot more i don't even want to talk about all the background noise and how much she's able to do that because what she's been through that's a separate conversation but first it starts with us right how are we you know how are we talking how are we communicating and also the opposite as women you can make a man fly if you make him feel respected you know and i'm going to say this as well before you have those conversations if everything that you say is always negative easily that's going to be a problem someone mentioned earlier on what men fear is the words babe we need to talk i'm going to say yes because what men have become used to is that sentence always attached with something that's negative always something that's going to hit him for six so i'm i'm for hashtag cancel babe we need to talk cancel it just talk just say, and as you speak, and we're human beings, we can come out of frustrations, these things happen, right? But as we speak, make sure that we're pouring into that person, make sure we're praising that person, as if just because I don't like A, or I disagree with A, does not mean that I dislike you, does not mean that you're rubbish, that you're useless, I still love you, I still respect you. There's this, 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 there's this, this aspect that I just don't like. Second thing is, and this is advice, marital advice. Don't let it get to that point. Have regular catch-ups. Have regular meets where you can discuss things. So it becomes easier for you to address these things because that person is ready. Okay, babe, what don't you like? What things could I have done better? What aspects of me need to change? These things will help you so much to avoid those explosions that actually happen from, oh my gosh, I don't like this, but how do I tell the person? Communicate. One. Of, by the way, one of the question that usually comes up with this is usually to do with sex i'm not enjoying it how do i tell him i'm not orgasm how do i tell him i'm faking it. how do i tell him and there's an aspect of men's egos that needs to relax but the only way you can alleviate these things is by communi communicating but you have to lay that foundation you have to create that you can't just do it like lay the foundation create it and you know it, it should then become easy to be able to communicate these things both ways because we both are looking at each other, I'm going to be thinking, do you know what? Yeah, okay, we need a bit of refinement here. The third thing I'm gonna say is, don't, and again, this is not a cop out, because even sometimes as Christians, we can use God as the, you know, as something. Don't forget prayer, right? Because in life, sometimes the biggest issue is not what we feel the person is doing, the, bis the biggest issue is us, because we're not dealing with ourselves appropriately. So before you even speak, commit it to prayer, but also ask God to put it on your heart to know if you are the problem, first and foremost. If it is a case with other person's a problem, ask him to give you the wisdom and how to speak about it. 
Mm. Simple as that. Like it, it, again, for some people who haven't practiced this, it might sound cliche, but trust me, it works because when you take that time to pray and you take a step back, sometimes we calm down. Sometimes we end up relaxing. Sometimes that allows us to enter in the conversation in a way that's going to foster the positive outcome that we actually want. So this is where we need to be careful. That's me. Be like the okay. Next question. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, that was a question. Oh, wait, last one, I was saying this as well. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with telling somebody that you may not like something. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. So, ladies, right. don't be afraid to say that. We say it, you know, be truthful about it. If you feel like something that, you know, just be also cautious about the way you address the situation. You know, just be, that's a lot of arcs, but I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that, hey, there's something here. You know, you leave your panties on the floor. Brother, pick them up. That's all. You know, it's not a big deal to let someone know that it may affect you and may harm you. Let the person know. Um, so, yeah, nothing wrong with that for me in that sense. I don't think you're necessarily changing him per se. Um, but I think when you come to things like style of clothes, things that are a bit more less about character and more about the person, you know what I mean? The style of clothes. Oh, I want your, uh, you know, your hair to be shaped up in a particular way. Like, the same way you wouldn't want a man saying, listen, 100%, listen, I don't, don't you're getting his hairstyle. You, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be, dem you don't want to be uh, uh, instructed to, you know what I mean? It's a suggestion, you know what I mean? And, it's, and, and, and suggestion means it leaves it open for the other person to have a choice in whether they take your suggestion or not, you know what I mean? So if you don't like the way he wears his shoes, listen, most people who really care about each other, when they when they make suggestions, they're not making it to kill the person. They're making the person maybe mm -hmm. to improve. So if you're yeah. saying to me, "Babe, those shoes," don't know if it works for that particular clothing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm like, "All right, cool. Which, which, which one do you think works?" I'm not gonna be a, I'm not gonna be big on it. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna if you if you're saying to me, "Babe, I don't know if those shoes actually work for that thing." Try the brown ones. If anything, I'm gonna be happy. I'm like, "Shoot, she's looking after me." You know what I mean? She can see that maybe this might not work the way same way it works. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And alternatively, the same thing. If he then says to you, listen, hey, babe, I don't know if that green dress is working today. He sh you should be able to take it on board as well. It's, you know what I mean? It's about the way we address certain topics. I don't think that's necessarily changing someone in that sense. Um, you know, uh, but I I'm, I'm going to say this. Some of you need to be careful. You don't do build a bear because some of you will <laughs> upgrade his wardrobe. And then when he finds a new gal, you're like, I did all this for you. And it's like, no, you didn't. You did all this for you. Because you mm. wanted to see him in a better style and better clothes and see him more cool. And now he is more cool. And now he's going for whatever he's going for. So like that person through that person is, uh, you know, so, you know, just 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 be just be aware about the way we deliver information. That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm going to tell you anything, you know, uh, the next question was. Uh, oh, OK, that was a, that was a comment as well by Real McCoy. Appreciate Real McCoy. So it's just helping her in that particular instance. Uh, someone said, why do men marry the safe woman and sneak around the around with the women their soul desires? Oh, my days. <laughs> oh, my days. Oh, my days. Um, oh, my days. Go for it, bro. <laughs> Good to me, yeah? Um, All right. Let's see. There's a lot of things that we could say. This is a weighted conversation, and it's unfortunate. Wow. All right. Do you know what? The bit that's throwing me in this conversation is the end bit because I can speak about why men marry the safe woman, but then they sneak around with the woman that their soul desires. To me, this is a man who doesn't know himself. Right? This is a man who hasn't come into an understanding of what he wants in his life and what is good and what is not. Now, in some of these situations, he knows that the woman his soul desires is not going to be a good wife. The woman that his soul desires is not going to treat him the way that he needs to be treated. But there is something about him that is attracted to this woman. Because this usually is the case when it comes to toxicity. When it comes to, you know, this type of woman, not a particular woman, but this type of woman has some sort of hold on me. And I'm going to give an example, right? I have a friend, he met, I mean, she wasn't a safe woman, but a woman who he says treated him the best that he's ever been treated in his life, right? 
but he was still sleeping with his son's mum. When I, I was asking him, I was questioning him, like, what? Well, let me understand your mindset, because like, why are you doing this? Because not the answer is not all the time, are you just because of sex, etc. right? And what he said to me was <clears throat> that he didn't want his son to be calling another guy dad, which is why he didn't want to put his baby mom's in a position where she could be with someone else. And I said, okay, cool. But when I really thought about it down the line and I started asking him more questions, I said, that's not even it. He then said to me, when he's around her, he hates her. He despises her, <laughs> makes me angry. But there is something about that that drives him in a way that he can't help but sleep with her. And what I understood it as, this type of, this, this woman that she was, him having sex with this woman was the only way that he felt in control, only way that he felt respected. So I mentioned this as a point that some of these guys, their sole desires do want a particular type of woman, right? But these types of women are not women that's going to be able to look at them as this is my husband. This is the type of man that I want. So it's very easy for her to take him on board because there's there's nothing there's no commitment. There's nothing, you know, when she's ready for that proper man, she's gonna go away. But when it comes to these guys who marry the safe woman, I mean, and it's not always the type of woman that he really wants, it's the safe option. It's because he hasn't really come into an understanding of himself and he's still driven by little boy, you know, little boy decisions. And that's an unfortunate thing, you know. I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna call out names. One of the biggest examples of this is uh Jarek Jack Jarek Jarek, you know, Derek Jackson. Right? He's the biggest example of that. From the beginning, you can see what type of man that he was. You know, when you look at who he was married to, he married the safe option, but he wasn't that type of man himself to be able to appreciate who she actually was. So as we all found out, I mean, most people found out late, but you know, from the beginning, a lot of guys were questioning him stuff and came right with this guy. And it came out that he was also chasing women that he so desired. These are not the types of women that's gonna truly feed him, but he can't help himself but engage with these women. Which is why, you know, there was no remorse, which is why there was no real accountability, no real humility with the situation. He knew what he was doing all, all that time. And it was more than just, I want to have sex. It was something about him that was deep inside that he couldn't help but explore. And he ended up breaking our poor sister's heart because of it. And, you know, that's, that, that's something that we need to address. You know, this is why I say to guys, don't get married until you're ready. Because if you're not ready to be the man that this type of woman that you prayed for, it needs, you're just going to break a heart and embarrass yourself in the process. Because it's just silly. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, bro. I mean, to be honest, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Why the guy marry the safe option and sneak around with a woman that's so desires? Can I be honest with you? That, that, I don't think that's the majority. I think, honestly, when you talk about the soul desires, I think you're talking about his, his penis. That's the honest, honest truth. Okay? <laughs> a lot of times he's talking about his penis. Okay? He's not talking about the soul desire. Um, Because it's very rare that you hear people come out and say, you know what? I cheat with the one that I actually should have been with. It rarely mm -hmm. ever happens like that. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, people are not finding their soul partners in another person and like, oh my God, I've got to, I've got to go with them. Um, oftentimes, it is the that something has gone stale in the marriage and not necessarily that the person's done anything wrong but it's just gone stale and gone to a, what we call a plateau it's gone to an even keel so there's neither uh too much passion nor not enough passion there's not uh we're not having too much money problems or not enough problem problems. everything is just on an even kill in fact even kill is actually the worst time to be in you know because when you when everything is just on a it's just on a an equal plane where just like it's not bad it's not good it's not that you can't choose a stand do you know what i mean and when and we you reach that what we call a pleasure plateau where your pleasure gets to a certain point where this no longer suffices you anymore and you're just on the same path a bit like when you let's say for instance i do youtube you know you might hit seventy thousand, you'd be excited but if it stays at seventy thousand for another year, you're gonna be you're gonna be frustrated. But if it gets to hundred, you're excited again. It's like the pleasure plateau keeps going. Now, for a lot of for a lot of men, um, again, I told you about the fact that a lot of men are just like I'm going to you. A lot of men are like women. They are choosing people who they just want to marry, and it's got nothing to do with purpose. Got nothing to do actually if they really love that woman. They just found someone who they can loosely find attractive, and they can have kids with, and continue their legacy with. 
That's the biggest problem we're seeing. Men have the same issue that women have. And so, you know, we document a lot about men and I'll keep talking about this in this situation about men. But I, I got to say, these men are no different to some of these ladies out there because some of you ladies want to believe that you go into marriage with pure heart intentions. Y'all don't. Y'all go into the same reason that the same men do. You're feeling like there's pressure on your neck. You feel like, you know what? Marriage has to come. I haven't had kids. You know what I mean? And you jump into a marriage. And these men are doing the exact same thing. They do the exact same thing by going, I need to get married now. You know, I've played a game or I've had other women. Who's around? Let me just choose somebody. And then you choose somebody and that person isn't even really necessarily compatible with you. You do a few years, maybe five years or whatever, or 10 years, even you might even do. Okay. All right. You might even have your one or two kids. Okay. And everything is, everything is covering up the pavement of the cracks that are happening mm -hmm. within yourself. And then you're just waiting for the right opportunity. A lot of men are not cheaters from the jump. What I mean by that is they're opportunists. Mm -hmm. They're not out here searching for the cheating. They're waiting for the opportunity. So the opportunity presents itself and then they take it. That's where a lot of men are. A lot of men haven't got the balls, the courageousness, nor the skills to cheat appropriately in marriages. <laughs> I'm just going to be real with you. They ain't. Okay. They haven't got it. Because also remember as well, we don't govern this space. If, if I want to cheat, I can, but I need a woman to do so. Uh, you know, and we don't have the luxury of having an, a plethora of women just waiting to sleep with a person. It doesn't work like that for men often. For women, it does. But for men, it doesn't work the same way. So you're often typically waiting for opportunity to come. And then you end up doing what you do. So when I say, OK, when you say, obviously, why do men marry safe women? Because it's safe. Mm -hmm. For now. It's safe for now. It's safe because I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be. I don't want to be uh, uh, beaten. I don't want to be, um, you know, taking. Uh, you know, I don't want to be. I don't want to be taken advantage of. I don't want to be uh, 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 with somebody who um, is, uh, you know, that that I can't control. You know, that's the reality of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so they marry these safe women, um, and then, and then, then you meet someone opportunistically, oftentimes through work or a chance encounter. That's one of the weirdest, one of the weirdest things as well. When you listen to people's stories about it, it's a chance encounter. And you meet someone, it's a chance encounter. I don't know how I met, just you know what I mean. Or usually it's at work because you get to meet that person for a very long time, right? Um, and then they take an opportunity and they end up cheating, um, and so. The, the the reality of it is is oftentimes the bulls are talking before anything else. Very rarely you ever hear men who cheat with the person be like, that was meant to, it was my soulmate, it was who was meant to be, I was meant mm -hmm. to be with her, rah, rah, rah. So they're not finding women that their soul desires, they're finding women who their nuts desires. You know what I mean? Um, and because they feel trapped in their current marriage because they didn't choose correctly, because they were they were in a rush and they were impatient about choosing the right woman. They just wanted to get married to meet the objective and, the, uh, and meet. I've got a family now. I've got the kids now. And they actually use that woman as a as a springboard. You, you're a placeholder for a time and a space for the right person to come along. You know? Because it's lonely to wait there alone, isn't it? When you're sitting at a bus stop and you're not sure what time the bus is going to come. It's, it's so uh, so these guys will be sitting there waiting until so they get into marriages. And as soon as their marriage gets to a certain point, they jump and springboard off the marriage and they find someone who's an opportunity. You know what I mean? This is not a good thing at all. I'm just, I just think men ain't finding their soul desires. What do you think, bro? Do you know what? Even, I don't know if this is a saying in America, but in the UK, a lot of the younger ladies have a saying that they, they only go for men who are medium ugly, right? This is the same, you know, vantage point that it, that it comes from, where they want to go for guys who they feel are of less value to all women or certain type of women because it decreases their options. In their minds, this guy is less likely going to A, B, C. In their mind, this guy is probably going to love them more. Basically, what they're saying is in their mind, this guy is going to serve a purpose until I find the one who makes me feel all the ways that I need to. That's usually where it goes, you know, and that's usually the safe option. So going both ways, it happens. It really does happen. And the fortunate thing is when you go and you settle for the safe option and you're not even ready to appreciate who that person is, but you know that, that your body desires something else, it is always going to be a poisonous situation because there is a part of you that is not able to give yourself fully to that person. 
and that's you know a lot of people find out the hard way in relationships and in marriage and it's unfortunate it really is unfortunate because it destroys everything and when people come to terms with who they really are or what they really want whether they can handle it or not is a different story right but you know it, it it's heartbreaking because like cole said it can be years down the line where people are ready to admit the truth and and again we didn't need to get there so we have to you know i I look at our generation as very different than our grandparents' generation, than our great-grandparents' generation. The way we look at relationships, the way we look at marriages is very different. A lot of us don't have the same understanding of what duty is or what respect is, about what honour is. It's really about what we desire and what we want, and that's how we often lead, right? So that's why a lot of these situations do happen. Because even if you think, oh, okay, this other type of man, hmm, I find a bit more desirable. Or this other type of woman, hmm, I find this person a bit more desirable, hmm, although they're not particularly safe. <sighs> you know, back in the day, you wouldn't even pay attention to that. You wouldn't even explore. But these the, these days, because we're just following our feelings, it's very easy to explore. I see it all the time walking around. You know, I'm paying attention to people. I'm seeing what type of, you know, okay so who are you with okay look, I'm, I'm thinking okay i want to understand this situation I'm, I'm looking in the church thinking okay what type of relationships are going on let me you know what the character what the what are the characters of these people and yeah it, it happens a lot the unfortunate thing is is when people reach a point and they just destroy it but to me like I, i'll just say this marry someone who you can give your all to someone who is enough someone who if someone else tried to come along, who let's say had, as a man, let's say had more money, you, you you don't even care because the person that you have is enough. The person that you have is all enough. If another woman come along that had a better body, whatever, whatever the case may be, she might be saying to you all sorts in your ear that she's a freak, she can do this and that. It doesn't matter to you because the woman that you have is enough. You don't need that. You're not chasing something. Like what you have and what you're building at home is enough. That's That's what we need to get back to. And I'm talking about even during the hard times, even when you want to strangle the person that you're with, like none of these things are an excuse to just ruin your marriage like that. That's me, bro. Yep. Okay, good question. I like it. Uh, question here. If a man says they fell out of love with a partner, then explores other women and later wants their partner back, should the Ooh. partner take them back? <laughs> CC coming with the sauce. <laughs> ah, sir, do you want to? <laughs> <Me? laughs> uh, so, where I stand on this topic, I'm not taking you back. That's as where I stand. <laughs> At least you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and even if let's just say, let's say I say, okay, God told me, God has said to me that I should, I'm not going to say I will. That is one of the most difficult things to do if you love and respect yourself. Because on the way out, for this person to say they fell out of love with you, it went, that, that's the easy sentence that would have been said. There would have been so much that would have been said and done that would have made you feel you know, rock bottom that would have made you feel like you ain't good enough for anybody or anything. Then for this person to go and explore and say, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. What What do I look like? Nah, it's it, zero tolerance. It's, and you know what? This actually happened to me when I think about it. I was with a girl, long story short, she abruptly ended a relationship. What I felt strongly was that she ended it in order to explore things with her ex. I felt it strongly. And I said to one of my best friends, what bothers me about this whole situation, because it seems fishy, is that I can't, I, I can't even, what's the word? I can't even, you know, feel that she's going to respect her body during this time. I don't even feel that she's going to respect herself. I don't even feel that she's going to even respect what we actually try to build. During this moment, she's going to try to go so far away from it and she's going to end up regretting it that she's not going to come back to me still standing here. After two months, she called me back and started saying, you know, uh, just, just, just talking to me again, getting to know me again. 
And eventually she said, okay, you know what, Jason, I have to tell you the truth. I said, okay, I already know what it is, but I want you to admit it. And this is when it came out. If she had never, if she had never even brought up, I would have asked anyway, because trust me, there is nothing that would have made me think that it didn't happen. I was convinced. I knew it happened. There was, there's nothing she could have said. Now, when she came back, I can't lie to you, my mind changed. I did not look at her in the same way. I did not feel towards her in the same way. I couldn't even see myself getting there. And I said to myself, okay, regardless of how I feel about her, do I want to put her through that time where she's not going to get that part of me anymore? Because I know it's no longer there for me to give. I said, it's not, it's not happening. So I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste her time. And trust me, she tried. She was regretful. She was upset. You know, even after what two years, she was still crying, saying, "Okay, I really messed up." Even no, even after what four, five years, you know, she was hinting about how you know the reason why she did certain things. But I don't, I don't care. I really didn't care. Because to me, I have zero tolerance in that. You ain't gonna disrespect me like that. Go and explore. Let another man do whatever he's gonna do to you, and then come back and say, "Sorry, I made a mistake. I don't have mug written on my face." Not me. It's not happening. Go ahead, bro. So just read it again. It says, if a man says they fell out of love with their partner, then explores other women and later wants their partner back, should the partner take them back? I want to be very, be very fair um, and just say, I think this is a case by case situation, but in most cases, you don't take them back. Okay. All right. In most cases, you don't take them back. Because one of the things is, why am I circling back to you? Mm. The reality is most times, not all, but most times, the reason why the gentleman's circling back after he's already had you and left you is because he couldn't find anything better. Now, yeah. it depends on how you take that perceptively. Some people might that perceptively in the sense of, well, you're that right, you couldn't find no better, and you, you should come back here. Hey, I'm not really mad if you think it that way. Some people might think in the sense of, well, you couldn't find nothing better, and you think you can come back to me and, re and resume. <laughs> this is not a game, boy. you got to keep on going, you know? So it really depends on how you're going to view it, but I would say that personally – that that person left your life for a reason um and i would say that you might want to give yourself some time before even considering taking that person back if they've ended up exploring with other people and other women sorry specifically then they've actually gone and done some soul searching they've only done they've done they've done some exploration with other people they've got to know other minds other bodies mm -hmm. um and they will have a different uh, uh, outlook uh, uh, to life and and to women um, now they've ex had those explorations. I would say to you that you may, I'm not saying you'd go out and do the same thing. I'm saying that you may want to give yourself some time before trying to bring that person way back into your life because you really need to think about what is a, their final goal here. You know, um, I know some of you are probably will take them back because of power play. You know, if you, if they come back, you get to have power. But if they, you, get to, you get to set their agenda. You know, you get to tell them, however, you're going to come back. These are my terms and my conditions. Um, and so that can be a case as well. But for me personally, if someone said they fell out of love with me, okay, ended up exploring another woman. And like you said, bro, unless I felt it was God that told me, yeah, I don't think I'm going back. You know, I don't think I'm going to have you back. You know, you guys already know my story when I talked about this. And I felt like God was telling me. Huh? And he did tell me. Not the way I thought he was. <laughs> Not the way I thought he was telling me. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was telling me to, to find a lesson out of it. Um, so for me personally, I would say that in the meantime, while that person was out and about doing what they were doing, did you go and seek any healing? Did you go and seek any fresh new perspective? Did you go and see uh, 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 if there's a, a different perspective you need to hold? Because what you might realize is as that person comes back, You've expanded your 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 worldview. You've expanded your perception, and that person no longer fits your particular uh, mo now. You know what I mean? And so, does this person even fit your um your final destination and goal? Mm, more than likely, most people do not. They left for a reason. They're coming back for a reason. You can repel them for a reason. You know what I mean as well. So, yeah, personally, I unless God said it, it ain't gonna be me. Yeah, you left. You felt out of love. I don't know how you fell back in love again because you fell out of it and you're out here slinging your rocks around. So, you know, for me, yeah, um, I'm going to need you to keep on going. Okay, I'm going to need you to keep on going. So, yeah, not for me. Let me let me add to that as well, right? Go Some people yo-yo like that because they know they can manipulate you. Mm. They know that the mental and emotional state that you're in or spiritual state that you're in, they can easily use to their advantage. 
they now have to just easily come back into your life after walking out. This is a very dangerous situation to find yourselves in. So if this is what you've been allowing, you need to have a long, hard look at yourself. Because someone can't, you know, I see these things as abuse, by the way. Someone saying, I'm removing the love. Okay, I'm back now. I'm removing the love. Okay, I'm back now. To me, that's abuse. So you need to have a, look, a long, hard look at yourself and be honest about why are you allowing these things to consistently happen. I know a girl who, you know, her her, her daughter's dad will come back for two months and then leave for a couple of months, go stay with someone else, come back for two months, go and stay with someone else. And she... and the frustration started to build and build and build to the point where she had hate for him. Like complete, complete, she despised him. Every time she talked about him, you could see the venom in her mouth. And I said, wow, like what has this guy done to you? But a lot of the times, and we addressed this weeks ago, yeah, you may have annoyance, anger, whatever you need to for a particular person. But you need to forgive yourself for allowing these things to happen because realistically you knew better realistically you knew what was going on what was going to happen but you decided for whatever reason could be loneliness whatever excuse you want to come up with to allow this person back into your life when most of the time they are not a changed person there's no proof there was no evidence you're living on a hope so the same thing happens and then what so for me in my situation I said, absolutely no way. You are who you are. You said what you said. It's not a problem. You go your way, I go my way. I'm happy. That's it. Solid. All right, next question. Uh, why do men put off getting married to a long-term partner? Mm. Why, do, why do men put off getting married to a long-term partner? <laughs> Yo, this is a good question. It's hilarious, though. Uh, let me be real with you guys. You ain't the one. <laughs> okay? Don't let Devel Ellis and Kadeen Ellis fool you. Okay? They're a different breed, and they're one of exceptions. You ain't the one. Yeah? Like, uh, you ain't the one. I'll be honest with you. Um, of course, there are other mitigating factors. Sometimes, you know, men are afraid of their finances, not being in stock, not being in in, in, in order. Um, sometimes, you know, they feel like, you know, getting married, yeah, the fear of marriage, the fear of commitment, um, that can also be the case as well. Uh, but I just think to myself, reality wise, if that person isn't talking about marriage, isn't trying to plan marriage with you when you guys have been together for a little while, if they're not thinking about that. And this is why you were saying earlier on about what's your intention from the very beginning? What's your actual goal? If you sit down and have a conversation with a man and you're trying to date, you should know what the goal is. What's the end goal for him? Is it just a date? Is it just to be in a relationship? Maybe he, maybe he's a one of those people that like uh, that say I like a long lifer. You know, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be a long lifer kind of person. If that's the case, at least you know from the jump. But if you know you like marriage, you shouldn't be silent, and you should let him know you you like marriage, and you should be able to give us at least a rough time time frame. You know, maybe you're looking to be married in the next two three years. Okay, that's good. You know. It, it may be that best for you. Maybe you're young right now. You think in the next two, three years, some of you might be listening. I'm trying to get mad. It could be the next year or two, you know, um, for your particular sin. But you know that you want to get married. That should now put the, the the impression on him. He should let you know what his position is as well. So why do men get married, get put off get, getting married to a long-term partner? Because what's the point? Especially if you move in, what is the point? No, real spit, what is the point? Like we're probably gonna get married. We're now probably gonna get married and end up divorced in a year. This is what, it happens to a lot of people. So what's the point? If I've been with you for five years, what's the point of getting married in the sixth and probably getting divorced by the seventh? Like, no. Let's just keep it as is. What's good? We're, we're good where we're at. Let's just stay where we're at. You know what I mean? So for us, I think for men, a lot of times, what puts them off getting married to a long-term partner is the fact that you know what? They you were never really the one, you know. They, they were, you were never really the one. They, you, you didn't set your stall out early to say, this is what I wanted. And they didn't believe that you'd actually leave if they didn't get what you wanted. You know? Go for it, bro. Do you know, sometimes this, this question annoys me, you know, because I really feel like the, the, the answers are so obvious. And, I, and I, sometimes I have to ask myself, what, what, why is it so hard to receive? And to me, it's, you know, you mentioned one of them, that you was not the one, right? There's another aspect where a particular guy, you can just see how he is. He's not 
the one for anyone, as in no matter what woman, it's not going to stop him getting into relationships, but no matter what woman comes along, he has to make the decision that this is what he wants, right? Just because you wanted it doesn't mean that he's going to want it or just because you feel like you're the best partner, it's that, that none of that means anything. He has to decide that for himself, that you are the best. You are what I want. You have met my desires. You know, the, to me, there shouldn't be a situation where you're with someone five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and you have, if you're being honest, if if you have told him this is what you want, and he hasn't even told you what he wants, or he's saying the opposite. If you put yourself in that situation, look, I have one particular friend with his missus for what? Six years. Then I have a child together. From the very beginning, he said marriage is not for him. He doesn't feel it benefits the man. He doesn't feel, you know, from what he's seen in his own family, he doesn't want to be taken out like that, you know? And in January this year, he proposed to her. And the reason why he proposed is because he felt that she wanted him for him. Not because of marriage, not because of anything else, because she wanted him for him. That's a wonderful situation and I'm happy for him. And I'm happy for her. But I would never advise any woman that that's going to happen for you because that is a risky situation to put yourself in. And the majority of the time, you end up with your heart broken. Simple as that. You know, a lot of you know Keisha Dior and Gucci Man. Well, wonderful fairy tale. Great, reformed bad guy. 95% of the time, it doesn't work out for you that way. 98% of the time, what am I talking about? And it's, it's, just a, it's a very dangerous thing, ladies. So to me, wall of age right so set your boundaries make them clear from the very beginning and if a person is not willing to meet them don't allow yourself to be you know wrapped in don't allow yourself to be roped in it doesn't make sense to me you know the amount of situationships that happen you know i have a friend who wanted to commit suicide because a man she was in a situation ship for six months said i can't give you commitment and you know i, I had to spend almost every day on the phone to her because she was in pieces i said what is going on like this is this is crazy. You shouldn't be in this position in the first place. You know, it's something that you really want and the and the man that you're with is not willing to give you that. You shouldn't be finding yourself months and years down the line in the same position. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And to the guys, stop wasting women's time. Be open and upfront. Don't hide just to get what you want. You know, don't don't manipulate. Don't don't, you know, don't don't pretend. Just be upfront. This is what I want, this is what I don't want. Allow her to make the decision. That's it. If she made the decision to go with you and she wants to switch it up down the line, that's fine. At least you've been honest. But when you want to lie from the beginning and manipulate, this is when you, to me, you're disrespecting yourself. So that means you're not man enough to be honest about what you want or what you don't want. You know, putting a woman in a position where she can feel like in her prime years, she's wasted her time. Like that, to me is, that to me is ridiculous. That's it, bro. <laughs> Yeah, bro. So I'll just say to myself, I say to you guys, girls, girls, ladies, sorry, even, you know, I always tell you about the PEW position expectation once. What is your position? You know, you like him or you love him. What's your expectation? I want to be married in a few years. I want to be married in two, three years, you know, and you ask him, what does he want? And if his want doesn't match your expectations, let's, let's, let's kick it up and let's get, get on our business. Okay. Don't waste your time with people that don't match your expectations with their wants. He will have a different want. Um, and so, yeah, people will waste your time if you allow them to, you know. Um, people waste literally their time, honestly, trying, Ooh. just trying to live in these moments because there's a hope that the person might change to being what they want them to do. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Meet people that are going to be in alignment with your expectations um, and let them vocalize what their wants are. Don't assume. Let them vocalize. Ask them the question. Where do they stand? You know, so that's a very important part as well. So, um, and ask, question, it, ask the uh, question. Go for it. Ask the question regularly. Just because he said he wants marriage three months ago, doesn't mean you shouldn't ask him again. No, check in, check his mindset. Is he still in the same place? <laughs> you know, just just check because people do change their minds for whatever reason. And let's be honest, sometimes people change their minds because they realize that the spouse that they have is not someone who they actually want to marry. You know, that can happen. But communicate. Don't just assume. Like, oh, you can save yourself so much headache. Even though it's upsetting, but it's better to have that conversation early than later. Go on, bro. 
Next question. Next question. Next question. Can you be the woman who earns more and has a better career? <laughs> Why you ladies want to do this? Why you ladies want to do this? Could you be with somebody who earns less than you? Could you be with somebody who has a lesser career? That's the question. Listen, I spoke to a friend recently and um, a really good friend of mine. And I really got love for her, man. She She'd be, she'd be really just trying to help me and, you know, question certain things on mine. And we was talking and then she was telling me, like, you know, she's dating someone and they're not necessarily on the same financial bracket as them, right? So she was talking to me and she was like, she earns quite a bit. I'm talking six figures plus. Yeah, this is not a small amount of feet. And I said to her, you know, I've known you for a little while, right? And you see, you're an attractive woman and stuff. But I said, I can't do it. I just can't, I just can't do it. I said, we're in two different brackets. We're two different tax brackets. I don't think you understand. We're in two different tax brackets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me personally, it, call it ego. Call it the fact that, you know what? I don't trust the, the, the woman species when they get into finances. Listen, not because they're bad, but because of how much power we hold when it comes to, we're talking about patriarchy. Most of us actually adhere to patriarchy. And that's what makes it very difficult when you're having these relationships. Okay. So I was saying to her, I personally can't do it. Then she challenged me and said, but why couldn't you do it? I said, because I feel like there will be a masculation that comes through. For instance, we already have enough trouble trying to fight ladies when we're saying about we need a man to lead. Already you have them pushed back. Then you're going to add the fact that financially this person also beats you and trumps you, which is a lot of where the power even lies when it comes to relationships in this modern era. OK, not too much our uncles and our daddy's time. We're talking about our modern era, how people often look at power within a relationship. I'm looking at it a very black and white way, by the way, guys, just so I can make it very, very clear. OK, mm -hmm. so how financial how financially that plays a role in, in situations as well. Right. Um, I, and so, you know, I, I said I said me personally, it, it wouldn't I couldn't do it. Right. I said, you you're amazing, though. But I just, I personally couldn't do it because I know how quickly this will descend into things. Then she was like, well, you know, she, that's not how she thinks. I said, let me test it though. You know, because let's just make sure. All right. I said, we're going to, I said to her, listen, we're going to buy a house. Okay. You, you, you've already bought one. You already have your house. I come into the house. What do you expect me to do? She's like, listen, I don't, I don't need to do much because I'm already paying for most of the stuff. I said, okay. So I was going to pay a little light bill here and there. Yeah. So yeah, you can pay a little light bill here and there. I'm not that's about that. What's most important to me personally is that person cares about me, loves me, kind, compassionate. Da -da -da. She listed off qualities. Nothing came in about money. Now, hey, when I heard it, I was like, hmm, I didn't tell you to list those, but you listed that. I said, okay, maybe. I said, and, I, and obviously, because I know her background, I said to her, You are one in a million. I'm so sorry. I said to her, you have a different kind of up, upbringing that requires you to look at things in a different way. The way you've been treated makes you see things differently. I said, because I know your background, I know this about you. I said, that, that's not how everyone's background is. And that's not how everyone's also influenced. So because you, you really cherish that the time, the energy, the love, the compassion, those things, they are rare breeds. And I'm not saying that women are even bad for not thinking that way. I expect women to think in a way that is provision, finance, uh, provision, protection, and priesthood. I expect women to think that way because that's the way we're actually wired. But you have a very unique, okay, a very unique perspective that very few women actually have. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of women say they don't care about it. But when you're sitting on my on my YouTube, when we're talking about certain things, y'all be saying to us, he better pay the mortgage. And he better take out the trash. You tell me what you're telling you're, you're telling me what you want from me. You know what I mean? So as much as I know women like to think that they really are universally, we don't care about his money. We don't care about the fact you're lying to yourself. Cause a lot of you, when you comment on these pages, you tell us how you think. Mm. So I'm saying to you that I'm not saying that this, these women don't exist. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. I am not saying that at all. What I'm saying to you is that there are very rare breeds. Now, there's a caveat to this story because like she said, like she, she didn't finish it there, but she doesn't expect him to stay in that level. Not necessarily to go past her, but she does not expect him to stay at that level. He's, he's, he's ambitious. He's working things together. He's put a few things in place or whatever. So he's already trying to ascend. So I said to her, then in reality, what if I never catch you? What if you keep going? How, how, how would you feel then? 
What if you always are the top earner and breader? You know, so look, I think there are very rare women that can definitely take this on board. Me personally, I just know that just the way that most of us are wired and bred, especially in Western society, you are going to be having an uphill struggle and battle in terms of even saying you're a man, let alone even trying to make a decision. I mean, some of the way that the comments I've, I've seen in, our, in, in my own chat, let alone out there, it, you know, will let you know that you don't make no money. I don't want to hear you open your mouth. Okay, so what I would say personally for me, um, me personally, I think if the gap's not too considerable, that's not a problem. <laughs> but if there's a major gap between the two, it won't work for me. You know what I mean? I think I make decent amount of money, but you make you put yourself at someone who makes 500k. Are you in the same bracket? You're not. You know what I mean? Am I going to feel comfortable if I know that, okay, you want to go on a holiday, but you want to spend 5K on this holiday? And I'm like, if I have to spend 5K, I've got to save up for six months to spend that 5K. You can do it four times in a year. I can do it once, maybe twice. So then will there now be an issue when it comes to even what we're paying for? I'm going to feel uncomfortable because I don't like taking advantage of people. Even if I, I like to make sure I'm paying my end of things. And if I, if I can, I want to pay all. So then if it gets to a point where that person then is able to afford things you can't afford, this is, and someone might say, well, you know, you should, you know, you, you know, if you love that person, you're not going to feel some type of way. I'm going to feel some type of way when you pull out your card and you keep paying for stuff because I can't afford it. That's just me. And that may be ego, but I'm going to keep my ego. And I'm going to take my ass somewhere else where the tax bracket ain't so large. Just saying. You know what I mean? Like, that's just saying. So I may be egotistical and someone can check me on that. Maybe someone can challenge me on that. And I'll be happy to be challenged. I'm just saying from my perspective, I'm yet to see it yet where this really works when someone has a major financial gap between the two. If she's slightly bigger or slightly has more of a career, I'm not. I'm not fussed at that. You know, um, I'm not I'm not fussed about that. Do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that for me is not a big issue. Go for it, Cap. Do you know what? I think the nice idea where the woman earns more is is you know, and she's and she's completely fine. Doesn't disrespect the guy. Mm. Still submissive. Still playing a part. You know, even on that, because you mentioned um, conversations on this chat, I remember we were talking about a similar topic a few weeks ago, and one lady said, this guy can, if I earn more, this guy doesn't lead anything. Right? Thank so, you. You know, and, and like, Sokoja is real. Like, the ladies come on this chat and tell us, sometimes exactly. contradictively, <laughs> you, know, it, you know, they push back, but they will tell us in the same sentence that what, what we're saying is true. Now, one of the things that... <laughs> I am, I've begun to understand in my life, right, is that when it comes to men, you know, a man who is about his purpose, regardless of where he is, he can easily get so wrapped up into his purpose that he becomes okay with where things are now, even if things are great. For him, it's, okay, we'll get there. We're going to go for the grind. We're going to do A, B, C, D, E. So therefore, what a man needs is a woman who's also of the same mind, okay? What I've also realized with a lot of women they tend to care more about what's happening now as an example of what's going to happen in the future. That's why a lot of women care about, okay, is there potential? Is this guy already achieved? What is he doing? Where is he going? If I can't see what my place is, if I can't see where we're going, I can't trust this guy to give me that security, that stability, and that safety. This just goes part and parcel. Yes, there are different people who have different aspects, different mindsets, but ultimately, because we're talking on a general basis, this is what happens. So therefore, like Cole said, I don't blame people for thinking what they're thinking. Like Cole, you mentioned about ego. I don't think it's ego. I think it's being realistic about what happens a lot of the time. Because when you just go through it once, it's a tough pill to swallow. I've been through it twice. While I've been, while I've been in Christ. The first scenario, the first time I realized, okay, Houston, we have a problem. I've got a job. So I was jobless, in fact. She was working. I was jobless. And I got a job without needing an interview. And before she gave me a hug, she said, oh, my gosh, you look so much more sexy to me now. Now, if I leave it that as an isolated statement, right, 
you might think, oh yeah, of course she's going to say that because of A, B, C, D, E. See, what I'm missing out is how the relationship was, how disrespectful she was, the attitude. But what she never did was use my financial position as a low blow. However, what she later admitted is that that position that I was in at the time influenced how she was being towards me. Now, when she said, Jason, um, you look more sexy to me now, literally, as she was giving me a hug, it was like slow motion. It was like a cartoon. I was like, wow. And at that moment, I can't even explain it, but it's like my whole being dropped. Because I, I had to think to myself, so how have you been thinking about me this whole time? That's the first situation. The second situation was the worst. Now, at this time I had a job, but the woman I was with earned double more than what I was earning, right? And although we had other issues, you know, this wasn't the only thing, but as we know, finance is a major issue. She consistently used that as a low blow in arguments from things like I ain't carrying no man, um, you know, from things like, I don't want to do this. You're the man, so have an expectation. You should do this, you should do that. Um, yeah, <laughs> like all, all the things that we would expect to happen, right? Now, for me personally, I didn't have the mindset that because of my financial situation that this, not that it wouldn't happen to me, but I looked at these women and said, you know what, the types of women these women are, they're not going to be that way. Give them the benefit of the doubt. So I didn't put that on them. But going through it and then speaking to other men, I even had a pastor say to me, Jason, continue being ambitious, continue working to where you need to get to, but choose wisely. Because no matter what woman you choose, she's only going to be okay with that for a time because she's going to expect you to level up. But there's going to be increased responsibilities. There's going to be increased, there's going to be an increased accountability of the things that you need to do. And if you're not able to meet them, she might say she's okay, but inside she's thinking, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to do A. Oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to do B. Reason being is because she is so inspired and so happy when she feels like her man is able to take care of things. I heard it, but I said, okay, now it's cool. You know, sometimes the ladies are not like that. You know, it's okay. And it's funny because when the ladies go through this situation and they say, oh, you know, it's, it's not an issue for me, it's okay. Those are the same ladies who will come out of those relationships, come out of those marriages and say, I ain't doing that again. Absolutely, I'm not doing that again. He has to be at least on what I'm on or more, right? So the world shows that this is actually a thing. So when we try to defend it, when we try to say, no, it's not, it doesn't make sense because a lot of guys have experienced this. A lot of guys have seen this. And this is one of the things that guys fear. So to me, if a man has found a woman who doesn't change the way she treats him because of this, you know, God bless that woman. But I would say it's unwise for a man to operate that way because things need to be done. You know, when she's pregnant, when she's given birth, does she want to go back to work straight away? Does she even want to continue working full time? She might want to be part time. You know, these are the things to discuss and consider. So therefore, a man has to understand what do I need to do? You know, if he's not able to do certain things or he's not able to continue reaching for the gold, it brings a lot of things into question because she has to understand, okay, what is my place in this person's life? As I said earlier, is he able to look after me? Is he able to look after me and the kids? Is he able to create the stability, the, the, the house that I need to feel comfortable in? These are all questions. So I will never, you know, say anything negative towards a man who says he doesn't want to be in that position. Just like, you know what, I've learned to, I'm no longer going to call women gold diggers because we're talking about finance here. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to use that term anymore because I've realized, you know what, women want the best. Whatever the best is to you, whatever, that's a different topic, but women want the best, right? They don't want to, some do, but they don't want to settle for mediocre. That's why when men tend to look like they can provide security and safety, to, but financially, even though the guy's a terrible partner, they are, way, they are more willing to compromise and say, well, at least we rich. Well, at least we got our bills paid. Well, at least I can go on holiday whenever I want. But they're still suffering because that man is not able to love them the way that they need. And now we have this conversation, if I'm rich, I, I deserve a lot of women. You know, these are the things that people are saying, right? So to me, in answering this question, can you be with a woman who earns more and has a better career? All I can say is 
I've had that example twice and it's failed me twice. You know, and even in the second example, I currently earn more than she did at her biggest heyday, you know, and that was her limit, whereas I'm not even where, I'm not even fully where I need to be yet. But my mindset is still saying, do you know what? I need to pay attention, first of all, to me and where I'm going. I need to pay attention to the woman that I've brought into my life, how she is. Because when the reality of the situation happens, when we're struggling, because every marriage goes through financial problems, right? When we're struggling, when things are hard, how is she going to be? Is she going to be resourceful? Is she going to be angry towards me? Is she going to be frustrated and bitter? I mentioned um, another uh, influencer called Sarah Gavi, right? He's with, for, he's with a woman for 10 years. For the first six years of their relationship, he was a provider. He lost his job. And what shocked him was that after three months, she started changing towards him. And her reasons were because bills need to be paid. You're the man, you need to do A, you need to do B. So as much ladies, you might say, you're not gonna be like this. In the reality of the situation, it seems like most women do change, whether you voice it or not, whether it's my micro or macro, most women do change. So it's about once you realize that change, how do you go about it? Because there's no way you wanna get the best out of the man if how you are now treating him is so negative. That's not gonna happen. So I'm not saying in all situations people break up, but it, it causes problems. So this is why as a man, you almost have to think in order to mitigate that, so I don't have to deal with that and be disappointed, I need to always be the one who has the financial power. And that's how men are taught from young. That's just simply how we're taught. We are taught we need, we're not good enough until we are where we need to be. When we're 21, 22, you know, whatever. But when we reach a certain age, 30, 35, 40, one of the things that women look for is that financial stability. The, the man who doesn't have that is undesirable. So, the, so to, to say that, okay, to have a woman earning more, there should be nothing wrong with it. No, that's about the woman. What you do in your career is brilliant. Like all praises to you. God bless you. You know, being able to step up in your career and really tackle the world and earn, that's amazing. And you know what, well done, 100%. But now we translate that to the relationship, translate that to the marriage. It seems like inherently when the order of how God has set up things isn't working, you have to go to greater lengths to make sure it works. But a lot of people are not able to do that. And it's not even just a financial thing. It's also who you are. Um, I think I mentioned this before, before I stop. There was a, there is a particular pastor, right? Who, you know, she has a big ministry and she's been married three times. She said her third marriage, the only reason why it works is because she's dropped the power. She's dropped the leadership at the door. And regardless of the finance, regardless of position, regardless of anything, she enters the home as a wife. She doesn't enter the home to try and lead and be the man and be the husband or look at her husband anyway or treat him a certain way. She said, regardless of the position, I need to treat my husband the way Christ expects. You know, so that's, just, that's, what, that's a realization that she came to. But as human beings, trust me, it's difficult. As a man, it's difficult to feel comfortable if you're not able to financially provide. You know, and as a woman, it's difficult to feel comfortable if your man is not able to financially provide. Yes, yeah, so let's let's call a spade a spade. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things you have to be honest with yourself. You can be completely honest with yourself about what your expectations are and what you're comfortable with. You know, if, like I said earlier, if you've got a guy who is not ambitious, doesn't want to get anywhere, and you're willing to, and you're someone who's willing to, you know, work, you work together so you can both be built up. That's great. But the unfortunate thing is, if he wants to waste his time, then you have a decision to make. Because you're not happy now. Can you imagine in five, ten years when there's kids, when there's a house that needs to be paid, when there's marriage, and he's still that same guy? You're going to regret making that decision. So let's call a spade a spade. Like it's, it's, you know, to me, this is not something that's even hard to discuss. It's just we also all need to be truthful and understand who we are, what we are, what we want, and where do we go from here. That's it, bro. Yo, this topic was definitely one of those, this question is definitely one of those questions that i got to start fires in the chat. Um, yeah, and I knew it would, because it, <laughs> it, it, it always gets fires in the chat. And the reason why it gets fires in the chat is because I think sometimes what happens is... Um, 
and I'm going to say this very bluntly, ladies, I love you, but sometimes you underestimate your own dynamics and how you actually play out in relationships. Mm. So as soon as it gets said that this won't work for a lot of people, the immediate thing is to say, you're fearful, you don't want to lead, you don't want to do this, you don't do that. Your immediate thing is to, is to go straight to that without realizing what the dynamics of relationships tend to look like. I said specifically, not that she earns a little bit more, is a major wage gap. Because we are in two different lifestyles when it comes financially. That's actually an incompatibility issue. Because we're actually looking at a lifestyle that's completely different. If this person lives on a particular plane, let's say they earn an amount of money and they spend a certain amount of money. They have a different lifestyle to me. And I said that I'm not going to be comfortable with that because I'm a person that likes to contribute. I like to add my opportunities. I don't want you to keep paying for me. Do you know what I mean? That's not how I see my re my role as a man. You know what I'm saying? So that doesn't mean that there aren't aspect, other aspects that I can lead in. Of course, I believe I can lead in those other aspects. But guess what? We're in the modern age of 2023 where I said to you, money is one of the biggest power tools and tricks within relationships. People are not getting divorced because they're Christians. They're getting divorced because, one, money issues. <laughs> OK, a two and failure to communicate oftentimes. Right. So these are the one of the two. And there's another one. I can't remember which one more as one of the major reasons why people were divorced. But money being one of the most, whether you're Christian or not, which tells me that money is something that has to be discussed from the very jump. And we got to know how this impacts a relationship. Now, I'm going to address a few things. Number one. We can say maybe the man changes in a relationship because, you know, maybe he's lost his job and he's, you know, maybe he's feeling down on himself. I can also say, well, we also know that there are women who do change their aspect when it comes to men. They see their security in men when it comes to them providing. If he now can't provide, they start losing their confidence in that particular person. So it, it can go both ways. We're not sure which one comes first, which one goes last, whichever one. I know both happen in relationships, but I know it ain't easy. So I know that financially, a man providing for a lot of women is a big, big thing. Very big thing, right? Number two, in this aspect, a woman that earns earns more than you and has a better career. Again, I'm talking about a considerable amount of margin here as well. As much as I say it again, a lot of people operate from a place of power when it comes to money, in terms of making decisions. A lot of you guys were on the live that we did the other time, and you were telling us straight. If I make three times more, who are you to tell me that I can't get a Beyonce ticket? Right there and then, <laughs> it showed me that if you earn more money, I don't get a say. So I don't want to hear when people say, that's not all us women. I'm saying to you, but there's a, a lot of you women who operate in that way. And you don't see it. But when we did that live, it showed us that the minority of women, it wasn't majority, minority of women understood what we said. Mm. The, the, those who agreed with us in that Beyonce video, you were a minority. You weren't the majority. The majority was like, oh, you know, <laughs> well, she earns more than you. What, what, why are you stressing? Oh, he needs to change the budget, right? So you want to say about he should lead, but you are questioning his leadership. You see, instead of it being like, no, maybe we need to negotiate and anything, you are questioning his leadership. Saying, how, does it, how, can, he, how can he tell her what to do? When... And I was like, well, there you go. So when, when the woman has more money, we can see how people operate. And, and that's what I'm saying to you, that me personally, I won't do it. I'm sorry. Yes, it might be my ego, but I won't do it, okay? I won't take that risk. Unfortunately, it won't be me. Number three, the dynamics of when we talk about hypergamous women, right? And someone did it in the chat so funny. She, one of the ladies in the chat said it, and I, I love that comment that she made. I appreciate the comment she made. She said, <laughs> you know what? Like, um, it's going to be hard, hard, hard fought for some of these black women because, you know, if they're earning so much, they're priced out of the market. I guess we've got to go out to another market. I, and I said to myself, why would you need to go to another market? Because there are other men who earn more than you. The same men, they just have a different race. Hypergamous women exist in all formats and the men always date down. Listen, if you're dating up, where's he dating? Is he dating up or is he dating down? Think about what you're saying. So you're asking me, saying if I want a woman that's going to earn more than me, and I will be breaking the dynamics of dating. You date men that date who are who earn more than you, are tend to be smarter than you, whatever, whatever, quicker than you, whatever you want to call it. You're looking for that. Not every woman, again, of course, not all of you. But, you know, you're looking for the man that's earning more and as more accomplished and et cetera, et cetera. Well, if you're looking for that, where am I looking to? Down? Because if, I'm if you're dating up, I'm having to date down. Do you know what I'm saying? With all due respect, not necessarily in that particular aspect. So I'm just trying to let you know the dynamics for me. I, I, I I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you, yo. Personally, it don't work for me. 
It don't work for me. And that's not to say there's not other forms of leadership. It's to say that that's not as respected. We can talk about being emotionally intelligent all day, okay? But we see what we see in the world, okay? We can talk about emotionally intelligent all day. We can talk about a man that is spiritually led all day. And we see what we see in the world. We can talk about a man that is more uh, accomplished when it comes to his mental capabilities. We see that in the world. I'm not, I'm not disputing those things. But what I'm saying is finances is one of the biggest reasons why people divorce. People don't divorce because their person's a pastor. They divorce because normally they haven't got enough time or they haven't got enough money. You know what I'm saying? They ain't divorcing because you're spiritually astute. They're not divorcing because mentally you're capable. They're not divorcing because emotionally you're incapable. They're often deleting you because either the money ain't making no sense to, the, to me having to cope with your emotional capacity or the time that you often are given is not correct. So I'm not saying again that women are bad or anything like that. I want to make it very clear that for me personally, y'all know y'all capping a little bit here um, because some of you really do think you're amazingly good. But when you get into power, we see what happens. We don't benefit. And that's not all. That's a sum. But the sum seems to be quite a lot. Proven based on that Beyonce live. I know they're not gonna like me, but the Beyonce live told me everything I need to know. I said, Well, I, bro, after that Beyonce live, I was so, I said, Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we, and we were still talking for about what, 45 minutes after. It's just like, Wow. All the Never. pushback, but then the contradiction afterwards is like, But you've just, you told us that you didn't agree, but you've just said exactly what we were saying. Like, it, was, it was shocking, you know. For those who wasn't there, I wish he was there, but it, it was one of, it was an exciting episode. Let's just say that way. Yeah. Very exciting episode. Very exciting episode. You know what? Uh, before, you go, before you go next question, I'm going to say this as well, because how it looks on a practical Because right? for some say they're not like this, so they don't have the potential to do that. Sometimes you don't even know that you're doing it, right? And someone put in a chat earlier about comparison, right? And this is usually where it happens. So imagine if you've been in a situation where you've either dated or there's a guy who's got a lot of money who's interested, right? But he's not a great partner and he won't be a great partner to you. There's just something that's not going to make you happy. But the most desirable thing about him was the fact that he's money. You know, he can make you safe, secure, stable, etc. Right? But then you've got a guy who you knew this guy will love you the right way. He, you know, he will give you what you feel that you need, right? That like he would actually be that guy that, you know, that R&B love. He would show you what love actually means. But I'm not saying he's broke. He doesn't need to be broke. The conversation isn't always, isn't always about being broke. He just doesn't have as much money as the other guy has. Ask yourself a question. In that scenario, have you ever allowed that comparison to negatively influence you? To the guy who's actually going to love you more and properly, but he just doesn't have enough money. Have you ever changed the way you were towards him? Have you ever been more disrespectful? Have you ever started to question things unfairly? You know, these are the, some of the practical things that actually do happen, even if you don't realize they're happening. And again, I'm not even blaming women and saying women are ABC. I, you know, you're just understanding just what women want. Again, women want to feel safe, secure, and stable. You know, when a woman is able to receive that, she doesn't want to give that up. You know, she, she, she's not going to question it. But unfortunately, a lot of women haven't truly even received that in the first place to even know what it is. So I, I can't expect a lot of women in this generation to even be honest with what they actually feel that they want because they haven't had men who given up that, who's given that to them in the first place. So, you know, yeah, man, that's all you have to say. You know, again, I, I didn't even give an answer whether I would or not, right? And I feel like that's that, that may not be the first thing that I think about. But I just know in my scenario, I tried that twice and it failed miserably both times. So it's something that I have to pay attention to. But, you know, but for me to pay attention to it is really for me to continue working on myself. Like I am really worried about, you know, somebody else, you know, I'm just focusing on what I need to do and where I need to go. And I'm happy, you know, I'm extremely happy, mm -hmm. you know, with the way I've turned around things with where I am in my life and where I'm going. So that to me is the main goal. And if the person in my life, I'm not saying my particular missus, but this is in general to everyone. If the person in my life doesn't respect where I am and where I'm going to go, then the person doesn't need to be in your life. Simple as that. Don't, 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 don't give yourself the headache. Same thing for you, ladies. If wherever you are in your life, if the man doesn't love you where you are, if he doesn't respect you where you are, there is no reason why you just need to entertain it forward. Like, let's stop allowing people who are not 
in a place to receive us properly dictate or destroy us like let's let's stop that because it doesn't make sense because when we step up and when we go forward and we become better they're gonna come crawling back and say i made a mistake i'm sorry that it always happens it always happens but don't worry about them just keep working on you and trust me that's the way you're going to be happy that's it bro and just even just even add as well as a thought came to my mind um around this topic which is really powerful is you know uh uh that the only way to counteract uh the financial power in a relationship when there's a large gap is status let me give you an example if you're a pastor okay if you're a pastor with a large congregation that has women in it i can guarantee you can counteract the financial aspect i'm just i'm, I'm being brutally honest i know it sounds wild but i'm telling you you will keep your wife on her toes and she won't be able to this this power thing won't work because again it's about power it's about what you bring to the table sorry it's about what you bring to the table it's what you about it's about what you bring to the table i know people don't like that term but it really is about what you bring to the table see we like to think ourselves as being so above our animalistic tendencies or biological tendencies we like to think we're so above it when you start mm -hmm. to be honest with yourself you realize I am no better than my biological responses. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not, I'm taking Christ out of the situation. What I'm saying to you is we're going to all have our moments, right? So, uh, you know, in, in all reality, if your husband says, well, I just preached the gospel, but he ain't making no money, you might feel some type of way, right? You might feel some, if you're paying all the bills, but he, he's out here doing the Lord's work, he's out here preaching, he's out here in the streets, you know, but financially he's not, he's not gaining, he's not able to contribute much to the bills, it don't matter how much he's preaching at that point. But if he has a large church of followers, of congregational members, then he has status. That's completely different. But if he's out here just on the streets every day preaching the gospel while you're paying bills, you're going to look at him some type of way. You're going to be asking Jesus, this is what I would call that for. This is not what I, this is not what I, <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. You know what I mean? If you're, pay, if you're having to live that kind of way. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not saying that women are bad, bad women or men are even bad. I'm just saying the reality of it all, okay, is that we are humans and mm. humans have humanistic needs. Yeah. The flesh has needs, okay? Trying to say you live in the mountains for 40 days and 40 nights like you're Moses, your body needs food, okay? All right? So, it, 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 you know, so I'm saying to you that, again, you have to bring something to the table to assuage the power someone else has. Because, unfortunately, humans are human. Women are only human. They, You know what I mean? If a woman can earn so much money that she trumps you, you have to ask yourself the question, what is she doing? Not a bad way. She works in an environment which oftentimes is going to be around other men, which often invites a lot of testosterone, which means that oftentimes she's going to have to be more assertive in her role. It's very difficult to take that off when you come into a relationship. We spoke about this in the chat before, how women struggle after being so independent for so long, even just even submitting to a man. Mm. You, some of you can't even submit to a man and you're telling me you can you can be happy if a man doesn't make money. You, it, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And I just don't want you to lie to yourself because I'm not lying to myself. I don't want you to lie to yourself. It ain't going to work. Okay. But there are some people that can do it. You know, you know, we, and this is my final point in this. We said, we were talking about um, the Beyonce thing. We talked about joint accounts and the we language. If you can't even say the we language, there's no way you're going to be able to date somebody who earns less than you. Mm. There, there's no way if you can if you can't tell me that your money that you're earning is his money and his little money is your money there ain't no way you can tell me you're going to be able to do this a man earns less than me you're going to be comfortable with it i'll say it one more time if you're not going to be comfortable saying my money is his money and your and his little money is your money you ain't never going to be able to do this thing that we're talking about that you're saying that you want a man to, that a man can earn less than you it will never work. You will always be saying, well, I'm just hoping that his ambition is great and his ambition is just going to take him further. That's not being comfortable in a situation. You know what I mean? So that's <laughs> that's just what I'm saying about the thing. You know what I mean? I agree with that. <laughs> Next, you know, they're calling him Brokey. But, you know, they want to say that today because they want to prove a point. But, uh, okay. Uh, but a good question. This queen won't quit. was a good question. Started off a good debate. Um, I love that point. Uh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what that question is. Um, oh, someone said, how do you see marriage? Uh, as a benefit or burden? So I think it's our last question. Trying to understand why men are so wary to take the next step. So I guess you can answer that quick, bro. I don't know. 
it, it depends on a man, you know. Like, for example, in my church, right, a lot of men weren't, let's just say they weren't scared of marriage, but they were scared of the expectations of the wedding and feeling like they don't have a certain amount of money to buy the ring. They don't have a certain amount of money to, you know, to finance the wedding and how they're going to look, how they're going to embarrass themselves. So, you know, that, that can be a burden on, um, you know, on guys in terms of the way they think. And it depends what type of woman that they're with. You know, there's some women, even if you say, okay, let's relax a bit. Let's make sure you have the money for the house, etc. Because this is what she's been wanting throughout her whole life. You know, it can be hard to tell her to, you can't get everything you want. But this is where it comes into, you know, yeah, there's compromise, but there's also an aspect of leadership as a man and how you go about things, you know, and how she may respond to them. So there's that. But when it comes to marriage specifically, in the world that we live in today, and this is what we're in, we can't just think of things in a traditional mindset anymore of how things used to be. In the world we live in today, what some men will say, a woman can decide to leave the marriage and she can still leave with argument, but leave with half of everything. Even if I earn what I have before she's come along, unless there's a prenup signed. As I said, I mentioned I have a friend who saw that happen to his father. He saw that happen to people around him, right? And he said, it's not going to happen to me. And the only reason why he decided to propose to his missus is because he finally feels for the first time in his, in his life that, and by the way, he's been cheated on a lot, that this particular woman that I'm with actually wants me for me. So I believe she's not going to do that for me. So for him, divorce is off the table. So he is of the belief that she's not going to walk away. That's one aspect. Two, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of men who don't see marriage as a benefit simply because what do they get from it? You know, to commit to one woman, you know, not having the ability to walk away. You know, it, some men struggle, struggle with that. They're not ready to be that type of man. So for them, there's no benefit. They're not, they're not there yet. So it's more so of a burden because they know if they walk away, everyone's going to be against them. Everyone. <laughs> this is how it is, right? Now, to me, again, we, this is a question where we can speculate, but you have to really ask the man how he feels about it. Ask the man spe specifically that you're talking to how he feels about it and why. Because it's not like some of the reasons that they have are not logical. They're, they're, they're logical. It's just that this world has made marriage seem, let me not say this, well, no, this world, but us as human beings, have really poisoned the idea of marriage or having a happy marriage or even going through the struggles of marriage and making it on the other end. You know, some of us have seen our parents divorce when the kids are older. You know, some of us have seen fathers go have different wives in another country and other kids they don't know about till you're older, right? Some some of these guys have, you know, uh, taken young women, young girlfriends, etc. cetera. And the, some of these ladies for themselves are thinking, I don't want a guy like this. Like, how can I trust men if my own father couldn't even be sensible, right? And it's the same thing for, for guys. When they've seen their mum emasculate and abuse, they're thinking, oh, so if I get married, is this what's going to happen to me? Is this going to happen to me in, 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 in marriage? Is it just going to be about the money that's in my pocket? Is she going to continue to be intentionally um, about her love and respect towards me? So it, it, really, it really depends, you know, who you're talking to and where they're coming from. That to me is the answer. Just ask the person who feels like marriage is a benefit or marriage is a burden and you'll see it. You know, I can give the spiritual answer in terms of what it does for us spiritually, in terms of how it helps to refine us, you know, how obviously sexually it, it helps us to really get away from sin. But also when it comes to leadership, a man has to really step up and be the man that he needs to be, not just in his marriage, but in the community. And a woman, despite how she is or how she's been in a single life, she will eventually realise that being the type of woman that God has called her to be in the place that God has called women to be in is actually more beneficial and it also does something for her character, just like the man's. We can talk about that, but the stone cold hard truth is that even for Christians, this is hard to think about <laughs> when the burdens of marriage are in your face. And these are the things that people really do think about beforehand. And you know, I just have to say to everyone, just accept what someone's saying. Because marriage is a big way. It's a big way. Men don't get married easily. You know, men will drag their feet. 
men will come and ah. So for them to decide they want to marry you, trust me, in their mind, they are hoping and they are praying that, you know, the lady doesn't just want to walk away and he's just left there simply because of the amount of effort that he's put in, giving you his last name, the ring, the wedding, all sorts of, all the sacrifices that he's made. He, he you know, it, it it's a scary thought because that means he's sacrificing so much of himself. Is he ready? Is this the right woman? Just like as women, you have to think about, is this the right man? Am I ready? Same types of questioning, to be honest with you, but you know, but I'll just say it to everyone, make sure the person that you're with has a great idea of marriage. You know, because it's not it's not down to you to convince them that's going to be okay. Because if you convince them marriage is going to be great and you marry them, marriage is hard. And it's not, he can easily walk away or go and do his own thing. He can easily just say, listen, you told me it's going to be like this, but it's not. So you haven't lived up to an end of the bargain. That's not your job. You shouldn't convince anyone that marriage is okay. Just show them who you are and pay attention to how they think about it. Then make your decision. There you go, bro. Um, I mean, I'll keep it short. I don't want. I want to. I want to go long. I think you've explained it quite well. Um, um, uh, and we sp actually we spoke about this yesterday. Actually, but sim similarly enough about the burden and, and the benefit of marriage. Um, but um, listen, you know what? I'll be honest with you. The world doesn't see. I'm starting to realize how much Christ idea of marriage is now separating us from the world. Okay, and we're seeing it more and more in this day and age. Beforehand, we wouldn't have seen a difference because many people are getting married because legally the tax breaks, you know, some of the child's uh, benefits you'd be getting, some of the, um, you know, the, the ideology of the society at the time, divorce wasn't uh, permitted as such. But I think now we're starting to see how the difference between the world and Christ and his idea of what marriage is, con is, 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 is reason and purpose for it. Because right now to the world, it's starting to look like what is the point of marriage? Yeah. You know what I mean? What is the point? Amongst average, I'm talking about the average male because the people who earn good money, they are marrying because they know that there's someone at home they can come back to. They know how hard it's out there, but uh, I'm sure they won't do their 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 stuff. But you know, I think you know, marriage in itself um, is 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 a godly thing. It's to see the purpose of God bringing union one to reflect what He has done for His people, His chosen people, but two also as well to reflect that look. This person is, um, uh, you know, this is this person is a mirror of you. They are someone who is going to show you just how much you need me, you know, because when you marry somebody, I mean, we talk about relationships, how hard it is. But when you marry, you know, I hear the story, it is even more difficult, but it, it shows you when times get tough, what do we do? You know what I mean? Do I ditch you? Do I forget you? Do I release you of my duty in those moments? Um, and this, this is all to do, again, a reflection of what Christ has done for his chosen people. OK, so again, marriage has uh, marriage has a purpose that God has called for it. Um, yeah. And the very first one we see is that the lamb and his bride. We see that main one there, how the lamb has washed the bride with his word, um, you know, and how. Uh, that the lambs, the lamb marrying us means that we can't get away. There's nothing you can do. If Christ got you in his hands, you can do everything you want to do, but you ain't getting away. Now, I ain't the lamb, okay? I am just a man, okay, with the spirit in me, but I'm just a man nonetheless. And so, there's not everything you can do that I won't, I won't be able to not, um, that I'll be able to, to accept. But the reality is about marriage in this common day and age is a lot of men are afraid of one not knowing how to navigate this thing accurately. And I'll tell you why there's no, and I'll say this from a, a perspective, you can no longer coast. Mm. This is the reason why one of the fears for men is increased. You cannot coast in the marriage. Yeah. Beforehand you could coast, you could hold that woman in place. You know, she can't financially escape. You know, uh, the world is dangerous out there, physically dangerous out there. Like she it is better safer for her to be in a marriage than it is to be out there, which means now, your effort doesn't have to be as much. It can just be about you earning money and you've done your job. But we are now in a place where that is no longer the state of affairs. And now you actually have to put effort in. And what we're seeing is those men that don't know how to put effort in are fearful of marriage because they see other men failing. And they assume just because he presents yourself to me this way as a man does not mean that's how he presents himself in a relationship. 
Just because I see you as a good friend does not mean you're actually a good lover. Okay, so uh, and 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 you will know this because if you sp you speak to your boys and you hear their stories, you know who's a crap lover. You know, yeah. you know, you don't have to tell yourself. You if you're not if you're not lying to yourself, you know out of your boys who really isn't good at relationships because when they tell you the stories, you can tell straight away. So the fear of that failure now has exponentially increased. You can't the era of margin now has been shrunk so much. It's scary. That's why we have 50-50 now when it comes to marriages and divorces. It's scary for a lot of men, right? And it, we don't want to fail in that particular area because the consequences of those fail are great. So now a lack of education in relational department means we don't really want to be stepping into marriage when I don't have to. Let's just date. Let's just do lifelong partners. That way I don't have to lose you uh, or lose the kids or even lose uh, uh, finance financially. You know, I don't have to necessarily lose, lose in that particular way. Um, and so this becomes a much more harder task for a lot of men to want to see marriage as a benefit rather than a burden. Do you know what I mean? So, again, I, I'm going to say that, you know, um, uh, you know, that for the, us, as, for the, for the, for the men, um, we're not seeing the benefit, if I'm honest with you. I know a lot of ladies, uh, you know, might not know, but like you were saying, bro, if at the end this doesn't work, let's say, if, and, and, and to be honest, a lot of these men's fears are not their own. A lot of these men's fears are people who are financially not in their bracket and they have taken it on as their own fear because half of you don't own anything. So when you divorce, you haven't got anything to, to give away. I don't know. You shouldn't be stressed. <laughs> you are fighting another person's fight. You don't have a house to be able to say, let's have half. Y'all on mm. council tax. In UK, we have council tax, guys, if you don't know. Council uh, houses. So, you know, whatever, whatever, right? But a lot of you don't even own anything. Okay? You don't own anything. You rarely own anything. The car's on lease. You don't own it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Your house, you're renting. You don't own it. There is very few things that you most people actually earn. You're, and this is what I'm saying. A lot of times what happens is the majority oftentimes take on the problems of the minority. A lot of the majority don't have £5,000 even in their account for savings. And I'm not barring anybody. I'm just telling the honest truth. A lot of people don't have 5K in their account for savings. You're, you know what I mean? You're average earners. You earn average, which is around about 26,000 in UK. And maybe combined, you might earn 52 as a household. But you, you don't earn much, okay? The little that you do have goes into whatever luxuries that you want to buy or whatever. You don't actually own anything. The only issue here is probably kids. It's kids. But remember, this is what we're being told on a regular basis about people's stories about breakups. When we will take half, when we'll do this, when we we'll do that. Because you're listening to stories about people that are not in your tax bracket, but because their lives have infiltrated ours, it makes it sound even more scary. I'm not saying it isn't scary. I'm just saying it makes it sound even more scarier. Mm -hmm. But when I hear men say they're going to take half, I look at them and say, but do you even own anything? Because what's half of zero is zero. Okay. Okay. You, you know what I mean? So it's not to be to downplay these men. It's to say more of a case. I get it. There is genuine fears there because if I love you and this doesn't work out, emotionally it's going to hurt me this this really is going to hurt me as a man i always say that men are emotionally fragile a lot of us are emotionally fragile the pain of heartbreak when you break it is different you know if my man's break it, it's something different but if you break it it's different you know i think we're a bit more emotionally fragile because we don't spend time in our emotions all the time so having to exist on a plane where you're emotional can be very dangerous for a lot of men. It's tiring, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Bro, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that part. No, you, you said it all, bro. You said it all. <laughs> all right, well, listen. We, 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 we've been on there for two and a half hours, so <laughs> I know the ladies uh, have asked yeah. their questions, uh, you know. Um, they've asked their questions, so... Um, you know, let's, let's, let's draw this to a close. Any last points, Cap? Do you know what this I'll just say, do you know what? Thank you everyone, man. Just asking the questions. You know, we'll definitely I don't know when, but we'll definitely do this again because it's been definitely fruitful. I mean, it's one thing to listen to us and speak about our own topic, which is great, but you know, some of the burning questions that you know different ladies have need to be answered. And also we want men too. Uh, men to come on this platform and actually ask questions too. And even answer in the chat, you know, there's 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 nothing wrong with that. 
because one of the things that we need to do is just talk is communicate you know there's, there's no silly questions you just ask the question and if you feel a particular way just be honest and say yeah this is how i actually feel this is how i agree i i, I disagree that's cool yeah this is why and this is what we need to do i mean this <laughs> again as i said in the beginning this adversarial nature that we have which is man versus women it, it needs to stop we just need to continue talking and the only way we can do it is just being by being honest you know so thank you everyone like just honestly thank you and the two things now nah, fact i'll just stick i'll stay to one thing that i'll just leave everyone with the same thing that we said yesterday like what can mitigate any of these issues is just knowing yourself knowing yourself first and then deciding that you know if you was a particular person in the past that you no longer want to make those same mistakes you want to be different and uh, giving yourself the room giving yourself the space you know seeking the strength of the holy spirit to really get to the other side because it's not going to be easy but believe that it's going to be better on the other side you don't have to settle for me mediocrity right i'm not even talking about relationships here i'm just about in general in life you don't have to settle for anything poisonous you don't have to settle for depression you know, there's, 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 there's always a way out. We just need to stop making the decisions that keep us in that same place. And yeah, that, that's that's my that's my food for thought too, to everyone here. Yeah, appreciate it, Cap. Listen, audience, thank you so much as well for participating and being respectful and and, and giving us a, a pushback as well. It's always good to get a bit of pushback and, and it's funny as well because, like I said, we, we do learn and we do listen, you know what I mean, as well. So I appreciate the, the pushback that you guys were giving in the chat. I was laughing a little bit as well myself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have our own personal jokes amongst each other as well as a, as a as a family and a community here. So, if you are new here, if you didn't understand some of the, the little jokes, you you will get it eventually. You know, as time goes past, um, the Beyonce one still kills me. But yeah, we will we'll definitely have our <laughs> definitely we definitely have more jokes if you stick in here long enough. We we like to banter and we like to fight each other as well in the chat sometime and. You know, we like to we like to 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 try and uh, debate a little bit as well. Never yeah. a problem, because everyone keeps it respectful. And so I really do appreciate that um, as well. But listen, we'll be back here. I'm going to be back here in about ten minutes time. I've got to do Lovers Blind. Um, so I'm gonna do Lovers Blind episode three mm -hmm. in about ten minutes. It's cooking this episode. I can't lie to you, yet. Now, bro. You need to get on this thing. Um, you need uh, to get on it. Talking about yesterday with my missus. So yeah, I probably watched this. I watched. Oh, well, I was blind. Yeah, I watched the first season that ever came out, and I liked it, but I just never caught up. So, bro, get on season four, brother. It's 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 it's, it's a new it's a new bunch of people, so you're good. Get on episode four, brother. All the episodes got released in one go, so you got you got up to oh, Friday yeah. to get the next one. Yeah, so five episodes. You got you got catch up, bro. Catch up, okay. Catch up. Yeah, because we we all need you. They're telling me to catch up now. Look, you know what I mean. So, uh, <laughs> listen, guys. Honestly, um. Ladies as well, thank you so much for coming through. Gentlemen in the chat as well. I know there's a couple of gentlemen in the chat as well. We really do appreciate your contributions here. You are safe in the space where your voice is um, needed here and it will be heard. So we appreciate you mm. for coming through. But love these kind of chats as well. So we'll see you again in about 10 minutes time. And then we'll see you tomorrow for Married at First Sight Live. And also if you watch uh, Put a Ring on It, myself and Crystal will be doing episode two breakdown for Put a Ring on It as well. So... Look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right. Much love. Uh, yes, El Cid, 10 minutes time. 10 minutes time for you, El Cid. 10 minutes time. Okay, guys, give me give me 10 minutes. I'm just drawing up your, your poster. 10 minutes time, guys, and uh, I'll get the live up for you guys. Honestly, it's been amazing. Like, share, subscribe, guys. We'll see you again very soon. You know I can't leave you without leaving you with well, young. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Okay, that little don't play with it on your okay. All right, not on her watch with the little purse strings. People will be out here fighting. Oh, I'm not even here. And Denzel. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you again very soon. I'm leaving with something. Indeed.